Good morning. This is your sports job wake up call. Uh, today's show should be hot and heavy, much better than last night's Grammys. Uh, did you also want to drink some cyanide? Yeah, I did too. What a snoozer, please. No more political shows. Hey, if you want to do something like that, call it a telethon so I can tune out. But we're going to talk about that and much, much more in about 10 minutes. On the Sports Shock Show. That's the Sports Shock, J-O-C dot com. This Sports Shock Wake Up Call is brought to you by Dentistry of Norcross. Ever wonder how the Sports Shock keeps that million-dollar smile? It's the Dentistry of Norcross. Call 770-448-4118. Press 1 to replay this message.
piece of advice, Ricky. Never get married. Look at the divorced tiger over there. You know, he still has the 1,000-mile stare. Gosh, that's a low blow. Well, our Alex Schlereth would not be happy with that because I think she's waiting for Ricky to pop the question there. <laughs> what? She, oh, she she's loves Ricky. Oh, I have, I've she got loves a little crush Ricky. Oh, you got a Ricky crush, too? A little bit. Gosh. A little bit. He's goofy. He's fun. What was y'all's favorite? I think green is red. I need some security. I need some guarantee. I need some security. I need some guarantee. to attract both users and advertisers. Investigators probing the giant attack on the insurance like people from China. According to people from China. Enough is enough! I have had it! Why so serious? And we hold the world ransom for... Wayne Gandy. Excuse me while I whip this out. Show me the... Broadcasting live from the Armada FM studios in Atlanta, Georgia. This, this is the Sports Chalk Show with Wayne Gandy. You may build me up, build me up, yeah, can you build me up, yeah. You won't break me down, now come too far. Come too far, yeah, yeah, I come too far, yeah. So just throw me in the town. I'm gonna it's a new day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, yeah, I'm gonna go on the way. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Monday morning. It is February the 9th. That means it's the day before the sports jock's birthday. I will be accepting all major credit cards. Uh, No gift cards. I don't like gift cards because all y'all do is put $50 on there. What is that? That's one meal for the sports jock. $50. And you people that give me those movie gift cards, add a little bit in for concession, man. I mean, you can't put $20 on a gift card for a movie. That's the price of the movie. But I will be receiving all gifts. I have a card here from Selfie herself. I just know it's a roll of hundreds in here. Um, But it's kind of thin, so I don't think it has anything in it. 
which if it's nothing in this car when I open it, it's gonna be some furniture moving in the world, in the words of Bernie Mac. <laughs> but good morning, how was your week? The sports jock missed you, I know you missed us. Uh, and in the words of Sam Smith, uh, I won't be doing this show because my gay lover left me. I'm, I'm going to do it just because I like to do the show. Yes, if you watched the Grammy, were you not suicidal last night? Uh, precious Lord, Beyonce, kill yourself for that. You're not that kind of singer. You should have called a whole lot of other people. But you know what, Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me sing. That was my church song. My mom used to make me sing at, at, on the spot to people. Just sing, sing them some songs. I'm, a, I'm not a singer. Sing, sing. I'd always get up and sing. Near the cross was my favorite selection. What, what a snoozer! Come on, come on, Grammys. People are depressed enough. I tuned in to be excited, and all you did was uh, keep giving. Stay with me. And what is record of the year and song of the year? Maybe y'all should have a little class about what differentiates that because we all thought that was the same category. And please, before I move on to the sports part of this, you don't have to keep R&B alive. Move that category on off. It, it, it's no more rhythm and blues. It is dead. I know Johnny Gill and uh, Tyrese keep going out on tour trying to keep it alive. But this new generation does not believe in love or making love or any of that. They believe in beating it up. No, 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 I'm sorry. It might be a little too early for that. Is it too early for talking like that? No, some of the it's never to all the 25 year olds. It's never too early. Oh, but that's the Grammys. I'm, we're going to talk about the Grammys a little later in the show. As you know, uh, it's good to be Malcolm Butler and Julian. Elderman, both of them presented an award last night. They went from Disney World to uh, the Grammy stage. The Patriots winning the Super Bowl uh, eight days ago. Did you have withdrawals? Were you sitting there not knowing what to do with your Saturday? I know domestic violence went up this weekend. Uh, men in the houses, wife nagging them. Uh, probably a couple dishes thrown, but hopefully... You are here with us to enjoy our our rendition of uh, the Sports Shock Show. We are here always live Monday. Um, today, the mediocre producer will be handling handling the music, which is always an adventure in itself. Um, he likes to DJ from his phone, which is always interesting. Um, we went from two turntables to uh, iPhone 4. He doesn't even have... <laughs> he doesn't even have the 6. Even the sports shock is more current, which is amazing. I'm no... <laughs> There's three-year-olds that have i6s, and he is back there with an i4 DJing for a radio show. I can't wait to hear... Uh, our battle today, as you know, the sports jock likes to keep a little competition going on uh, in the Grammy spirit. We're going to go uh, Stevie Wonder versus Earth, Wind, and Fire. Who do you pick, Stevie? Or do you pick uh, the guy that never has the guitar plugged in, whatever that tall guy is in Earth, Wind, and Fire? He always acts like he's playing the bass, but there's never a chord on the bass guitar at all uh but they do put on a great concert uh we're gonna talk about warren sap in this show um prostitution is that the new way to get a woman just order her up is that the new america um blonde you know send the dimensions order you something up uh it, it's like that that's what i call housewife shows ordering prostitutes i said it yeah all that reality TV. But we have a lot to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about Coach Dean Smith. If you were born anywhere in the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, there was no more popular coach in sports than Dean Smith. He has passed away uh, at the age of 83. But when I heard the news, it's, it's all, what I always tell kids about your legacy. Um, some people pass away and, uh, and they're not here, but their name is remembered in the sense 
that they still feel like they are here. That's the kind of impact they have had in this man here. Um, not just players on the court, but off the court showed us really how a coach can have a university at his top level, um, not just in performance, but actually in making and turning out great men. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little later. Uh, and Big Kenny, as usual, you know, he's always bringing us those weird stories. He's shaving some girl's hair later in the show. We'll talk about that. Not you, Selfie. Not you. Just relax. But I'm going to open your card right now before I introduce you so I know how to introduce you. Um, getting older. Just what you should tell somebody that's getting older in the card. Getting older is kind of like frying bacon in the nude. Uh huh. Never done that. I've eaten bacon nude, but I've never fried it nude. Uh, you know, it's going to hurt, but you're not exactly sure where. Happy birthday. Let me smell it. Does it have bacon flavor? No, it doesn't make any noise. Um, well, you get this from Texaco, the Shell Station. Did you, where did you go? Publix. Okay, that's all the sports jock is worth. Publix. Happy birthday. Uh, thank you for the opportunity of a lifetime by being in your show. You are a, she misspelled genuine, so she's... <laughs> She wrote a line through it. Man, that Georgia State education. A uh, genuine person with a caring and warming heart. Hope you enjoy your day. Uh, selfish selfie. At least you got that right. There you go. But thank you for the card. Yeah, bacon in a pan. Uh, three pieces of bacon is definitely not enough for the sports jock. I like about half a pack. That was not a joke. That was a. <laughs> you know, bacon is like a ruffle. You just can't have what is lays. You can't just have one. You got to have a lot, like a lot of it. But uh, everybody is dressed. Everybody looks nice today. Reverend Ryan has on his suit and tie, looking like uh, one of the pips from Gladys Knight. Um, the mediocre producer is over there. He just looks like a mediocre producer. <laughs> Big Kenny is styling and profiling. Selfie has uh, her push-up bra to give a little extra effect. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Maybe y'all should not show her from the neck down. Just show her face today. Got her hair done, too. Must have been a good weekend. Okay. Well, coming to the show today, as you know, as usual, uh, we're going to call him Mr. Starburst this morning. Uh, <laughs> right from the shot, Big Kenny. Good morning to you, Big Kenny. Good morning, Sports Jack. Uh, Selfie bought you a car from Publix, and <laughs> once again, she has spent three times as much as I have spent on your birthday <laughs> present. Uh, you know, it's just something about guys exchanging gifts right, that way right. on uh, birthday. You know, how do how do I even approach that? Uh, hey, good morning, Sports Jack. I just want you to know uh, I've been tracking your age for the last year. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I wanted you to know how special you are to me. So <laughs> if you would accept this bracelet, <laughs> what do I, where do I go with that? I, or get you a card with, and then get upset when you don't put it over the fireplace or something like that. I don't know. So I'll just dap you up. We'll do a shot later. Okay. And, um, you know, I'll get some hookers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Call Warren Sapp. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's uh, just We'll just do guy stuff. Just guy stuff. And to his right. Uh, the lively and beautiful Miss <laughs> Selfie, Selfie, Selfish, Selfie. Selfie, yes. Selfie, Selfie, I am Selfish, Selfie. selfie now. <laughs> Good morning to you. Good morning, Sports Thank job. you for the card. No problem. Uh, okay. It Did took you? me an hour to find that card. Really? And, and Bacon <laughs> spoke out to me about uh, you. I said he likes Bacon, so. <laughs> Man, if it took you an hour, how do you find your keys? Ew, if it took you an hour me, to find that card. It takes me longer to find my keys, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Are y'all ready? Did you watch either one of you watch the Grammys last night? 
Um, yeah. I was told not to watch the Grammys. Um, you was holding out? How you do that? Well, I came back from work and someone asked how the Grammys were going to a friend and she said, don't tune in. It's horrible. So, oh, okay. You got that on-demand stuff on your computer? Um, nah. Well, how do you watch it if it was off? Hmm? Did you record it? No, 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 no. I came home and I was texting oh, someone. Oh, yeah. okay. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that and much more uh, coming up in the show. It's the birthday edition of the Sports Jock Show. Remember, all major credit cards, 888-926-7562. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy is coming up next. Atlanta Olive Oil Company is this week's Sports Jock of the Week sponsor. Located at 1133 Huff Road, Suite F, Atlanta, Georgia. Visit them this week for samples of the Sports Jock Oil of the Month, Black Walnut BV. Atlanta Olive Oil Company is more than just a place to buy gourmet-infused olive oils and balsamic vinegars. It's a unique gathering place for tastings and intimate settings. Located at 1133 Huff Road, Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta Olive Oil Company. Proud sponsor of the Sports Jock Show. You are a waste, a loser. Everyone hates you. Why don't you just stay in your car and keep driving? I'm serious. Drive until you run out of gas and get out of your car and walk until you find someone who doesn't think you're dumber than bricks. Could take a while, but at least all that walking might burn a couple of calories. You may not witness bullying like this every day. Your kids do. They want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov to learn safe, simple ways your child can help stop bullying. Be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. This Sports Shock Health Update brought to you by j and Naturals. There's a lot of truth behind the words, you are what you eat. j and Naturals promotes the benefits of vegan and raw foods diet. Many are unaware that the standard American diet is one of the top leading causes of many chronic illnesses and cancers today. Much of the foods many Americans eat are saturated with fats, sugars, and toxic chemicals and preservatives that are detrimental to our health. Only the purest ingredients create holistic remedies for body, mind, and soul. Visit JANaturals.com. This is Namdi Asamoa. I play football for the Philadelphia Eagles, but what I do off the field with United Way might be more important. I'm a volunteer tutor and mentor. Why? Because over a million kids a year drop out of school, and that's not okay. It takes 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be me. Or it could be you. Studies show that if we get to these kids earlier, their chances are better. And kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. So join me in United Way. Suit up and take the pledge. Become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor. Because when a child succeeds, we all succeed. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Take the pledge at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way, the Ad Council, and the National Football League. Visit Nally Ford Sandy Springs on Roswell Road and tell them you heard this ad on the Sports Junk Show for the best deals on the all-new 2015 Fords. Like the 15 Ford Expedition Platinum, Focus Titanium, and save even more on the 2014 Edge SE. Nally Ford Sandy Springs, 7555 Roswell Road. Or visit NallyFord.com. Be sure to tell them you heard about it on the Sports Junk Show. That's NallyFord.com. To the sports job, Wayne Gant. Well, when things go wrong, go wrong with you. Well, you know it hurts me too. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock, Wayne Gandy. Uh, we are here. It is Monday morning. Uh, I'm here with the funny man, Big Kenny, and the vain and always enter herself, 
That's why we call her Selfie. Oh, uh, I thought you were still talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Banging it into himself. Uh, I, I just really want to quickly ask. I, I thought that we were doing Stevie Wonder versus uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Me too. I'm of which I, I don't know that sounded like uh, John Lee Hooker or Robert Johnson or some antiquated blues singer. Well, let's see. Let's get it. Uh, who was that? Because I don't know if it's either one of the two artists. That, uh, that was one of the bumpers that was loaded in here. It says Hurt So Good. I don't know if it's Okay. So, oh. uh, so we're not So doing basically you Earth. just said uh, to hell with what we asked you to do today right. on the show. And okay, so when will we get the battle music? Only on the outro? Yeah, I was thinking that we could do it coming in and going out. Of well, that's oh, oh, he what, was that's, that's, that's he was thinking. That's usually what we do here. He was okay, thinking. Four years later. <laughs> that's was, usually how I've been here for four years. I mean, he, he, same he, seat. He was thinking. <laughs> he, was, he said he was thinking. He was thinking. Well, I was thinking oh, that we could. Uh, I was thinking that we uh, could do it this way. <laughs> yes. I tell you, you see suck at this. With? And y'all wondering why Brian Williams left NBC really? News. <laughs> why, why he had to make stuff up because, you know, <laughs> his real life was too boring. You know what I mean? This is kind of help he had. Like, man, you know what? I'm just going to leave. Y'all don't, you got the man. He, 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 played, he played music coming back from break like we spent to do a slave report. Like, you know. <laughs> and in uh, slave wages today, Negros is making a quarter of a penny for a bushel of taters and three cents per oh, acre man. of cotton. Oh, man. This dude here. Uh, it's an earth, wind, and fire. Stevie Wonder battle. That's in and out, if possible. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Google them so that oh, you know who man. they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sad news, but uh, sometimes, uh, even in death, as I said earlier, um, the way you see a person will live on forever. Dean Smith, former head coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels, uh, the main reason most of us even know the name, the North Carolina Tar Heels, coached from 1961 to 1993, has passed away at the age of 83. Uh, the building is called the Dean Dome. So uh, if you didn't know, now you know young generation. Uh, this is the legendary coach of the James Worthies and the J.R. Reeds and Sam Perkins, Sleepy Floyd, and as we all know, the great, maybe the greatest, Michael Jordan. Um, the program stellar, uh, not as many national championships as you would have thought. Uh, only two in his tenure, went to the Final Four 11 times, which is an accomplishment in itself, only was able to bring it home twice, um, but a team that year after year after year put out pros, um, Brad Doherty. I mean, the list can just go on and on and on. We're talking about just uh, Hall of Famers all around. Big Kenny, Selfie. Um, well, first of all, why, why does uh, Barack Obama, the president, have to weigh in on everything? <laughs> he weighs in on <laughs> basketball coaches, the Grammys, people having beers, uh, who – you know, who had hot coffee at McDonald's. I mean, how do you get all this information, Barack? I thought you was in uh, another country. In another country <laughs> well, talking I mean, to. <laughs> they ask him this stuff. I mean, he probably's not even aware of it most of the time. All right. Uh, you know, when they ask him about beers and, and other stuff, then he has to go, oh, I, uh, and then somebody whispers something with a little, prompter he's got in his ear yes mr president you do care uh, i do care and i think it's you, you think it's very tragic what happened to the people i think it's very tragic what happened to the people because i mean you, do you think he's actually tracking any of this stuff you, you know what i mean they could they could say uh john Kerry died and they'd be like how do you feel about the death of john Kerry?" he'd be like what you know what I'm but somebody's there to go oh mr president yes you do oh uh, yeah he, he was uh, he's great and uh, he's a great basketball coach and you know and and then they go on with it so uh but he's from that era he's a sports fan no he, I, yeah, I he's know a that. big uh it was just funny how fan. like you you hear 
speak on this when he passed on like Saturday and then last night they showed him on the Grammys. It's like every why, why? local, almost like local topic. Uh, you know, T-Bone and Red Stock. <laughs> what do you think about T-Bone? Well, 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 I, thought, I, thought, I thought T-Bone made a wise choice. <laughs> it's interesting when uh, these icons pass, like that just happened that they rarely go to the people that knew them personally. Right. <laughs> they always go to people that never met them. You know, like, how do you feel about uh, Dean Smith passing? Well, uh, yeah, I remember, right. I remember watching that game. So right. selfie iconic coach. Um, I know you, you're the young generation. So y'all think coaching started with Phil Jackson, uh, but there were coaches Actually, before yeah. that. See there. <laughs> Dean Smith, uh, for someone your age, have, had you heard of him before? I any definitely kinda? heard of him from my father, because um, you know, you named all the greats that my dad watched. Uh, to think about that, you wonder how good of a coach you are to create so many greats, mm -hmm. or is it that you just had that many greats? But um, yeah, I think it's a tragic moment. I think uh, Michael Jordan did speak on it too, as well, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I think yes. his speech, and it was pretty touching as well. Um, I think it's sad to see him go, but hey, at least he left a big, pretty big legacy behind him. He has a dome named after him mm -hmm. and everything. And when he retired after 36 years, he was at that time the winningest coach. I think he might be about fourth or fifth now on the list. Mm -hmm. But at the time of his retirement, which is all you can control, he was the winningest coach in college basketball. And, and to show you how important he was, uh, Sophie just said her dad talked about all of those greats that you just mentioned, uh, which means that uh, she kind of low key called you old enough to be her father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Basically, is what I got. At. That's what I took from that. Is that what well, just I, happened? I she, did she... take that trip to <laughs> in '89. We <laughs> went on a sabbatical. <laughs> Long lost daughter. <laughs> uh, yeah. And you know the 80s wasn't big on Trojan. <laughs> pa -pa. <laughs> uh, but Dean Smith, I mean, he's just a iconic figure. He's up there with the John Woodens, the Bobby Knights, the Adolph Ruff, the people who really um, brought college basketball. And, and, and there used to be this thing that the only person that ever stopped Michael Jordan from scoring was Dean Smith. Like, it was, <laughs> and, <laughs> it was, right. and, and, you know, I, I think that was an era when you – respected what a coach bought to a player's life on and off the court because he made a lot of those guys better citizens. Uh, he sent some fantastic people to the NBA because in today's society, uh, 11 times to the final four in his tenure to only win two championships, he'd be much maligned today. Mm -hmm. Everybody would be like, ah, the coach who never really <laughs> wins as much as he goes. You know what I mean? It used to be an honor just to make it to the final four. Mm -hmm. Uh, it because that was the first time this morning that I really realized wow he only won two national championships because they were always mm -hmm. there and uh, it just seemed like that was as big an honor as winning because all you talked about was North Carolina and and for some of you that might may not even know college basketball was bigger than the NBA it used to rise and sh basketball was just seen as a college basketball thing if you Go back and you realize that the NBA, most of the time until the mid-80s, recorded their games and showed them tape delayed the next day. It was all the college basketball players from that era, the 60s and the 70s, that first and foremost, everybody stayed in college. Right. So you didn't have that one thing and done. You didn't have that two, you know, it was mostly three years and or even your whole time there. So college basketball coaches – uh, where you, parents did pass their sons and daughters off and their responsibility, as Big Kenny is saying, is not just to teach them basketball, but to also kind of teach them how to be men and women. They used mm -hmm. to kind of give you that uh, as a coach, that kind of power to discipline and to, you know, be that second dad. And you even hear a lot of reports from the different players that they saw him as that second father figure. Um, now you can't actually almost have a conversation with a kid because that'll get you fired. But back then, it was the whole key. Mama dropped you off at college, and and some of the coaches would tell you, you know, I'm your daddy, right? 
<laughs> yeah, like 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 Jerry Sandusky. Yeah, 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 you know I'm your dad, is right? It yeah. is, it, is it is it is it? No, it's it's pre-birthday. Anything right. goes. Yeah, that's Anything goes. I'm saying somebody's got to send me a memo. How early does that start? For how early can I go in? Somebody send a memo. I'm sure. And, and now that I said somebody sent a memo, I looked over and the mediocre producer's typing <laughs> like. Memo, you're right? Gonna hear, you're going to hear a ding on your phone <laughs> in a second. Memo you know. coming right up, Big Kenny. Uh, but I think as a coach, all you can ever have is your players leave and become good men. And I mentioned a couple of names, uh, but the list of uh, – I'm reading that it says more than 50 players went on to play professional basketball NBA. Uh, Walter Davis, Sam Perkins, Brad Doherty, Jerry Stackhouse, Rasheed Wallace, Vince Carter. Antoine Jameson. A lot of these guys uh, still so playing people. now. Yeah, yeah, some of these people. Crazy. Um, some Hall of Famers in there. So too. it's a long time, a lot of winning, a lot of tradition. And um, at least in my era, it was probably the most prestigious place to go play college basketball. Right. Yeah. Either there or Indiana. You see, those were the schools. Uh, the Dukes hadn't became the Dukes yet. You know, but those places were the places to go be able to say you went to North Carolina to play right. basketball. You said a lot back in those days. Wow. Um, I guess I am showing my age, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was yes, to, yes, I did. I was trying to avoid that today. But <laughs> hey, that's all right. Go ahead, young man. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to go to break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about Dean Smith. Uh, I want to see y'all, I want to show y'all this sick dunk. By this Kentucky basketball player on Saturday against Florida. 888-926-7562. More of the Sports Jock Show right after this. Very superstitious. Don't go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy is coming up next. The Sports Shock Red Zone is sponsored by Life Marketing, the official marketing company of the Sports Shock Show. We create and manage top performing social media campaigns for businesses. Life Marketing, driving success, guaranteeing positive results and return on investment. This is Namdi Asamoah. I play football for the Philadelphia Eagles, but what I do off the field with United Way might be more important. I'm a volunteer tutor and mentor. Why? because over a million kids a year drop out of school, and that's not okay. It takes 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be me, or it could be you. Studies show that if we get to these kids earlier, their chances are better, and kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. So join me in United Way. Suit up and take the pledge. Become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor. Because when a child succeeds, we all succeed. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Take the pledge at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way, the Ad Council, and the National Football League. In D.C. Family Care Incorporated's Dr. Jermaine Cummings of Loganville, Georgia, is now accepting new patients in the Loganville area. Introduce yourself to Dr. Cummings and her unique approach to health care today. Visit drjermainecummings.com. That's D-R-G-E-R-M-A-I-N-E Cummings.com. Or call 770-554-8828. That's 770-554-8828. And tell her you heard this ad on the Sports Jock Show. drjermainecummings.com. Hey dad, how do you throw a curveball? How do you build a fort? How do refrigerators run? How do fish learn how to swim? Kids ask a lot of questions. How high can you jump? But you don't have to know every answer. How many phone numbers are there? Because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. How do cell phones work? There are thousands of children in foster care who don't need every question answered. What's electricity? They just need you. What's the moon made of? For more information on how you can adopt, go to AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. And now, now, now back to the sports job. Wayne Gantt. Yeah. In the red 
нравится. I'm telling you, you play the club, man. It's your play. <laughs> well, man, man, you taking too long, man. You slowing down the game, man. It's clubs. You ain't got no clubs. <laughs> then play it then. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sports Talk Show. Some of y'all, y'all, yeah, some of y'all never <laughs> you know. If you never, I know some, if you're 25 and under, you probably never even seen a deck of cards. But, uh, you know, we... What you mean? You, you, you've seen a deck of cards before? Yes. I oh, okay. I play card games all the time. Really? Mm-hmm. I thought y'all, that was too, you know... No, no. Old school. I think the Millennium Kids are the 2000s when it stopped, really. When you born, like, 2099? I was born nine years before that. Oh. <laughs> she, said, she said the Millennium. Uh, I'm thinking, aren't you the same? As the, <laughs> what is, <laughs> you, you know, listening to this Stevie Wonder versus uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire battle it makes me think that stevie wonder his music to me brings up memories of possibly anything some barbecues hanging out in the backyard Mm. uh, growing up earth wind and fire music is usually followed by a mop and a pail and a broom because that was (laughs) that was my mom's cleanup music if you heard earth wind and fire we were about to scrub something down Uh uh-huh period Okay. We knew some bleach and some ammonia was coming when we heard Earth, Wind, and Fire. It was like, oh, here we go. Right, right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Somebody cutting clubs and mad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the fight is about to break off. It's about to straight break off. <laughs> uh, we have a surprise Skype on hold. A surprise Skype. I know it ain't my mom because she don't even have <laughs> email. <laughs> so who could this surprise Skype person Skype. be? Skype. Skype. Lady T? No. It's a surprise. Uh, Lauren, who, who, that's so awesome. Man. Erica Ash, that's who it is. You think so? Who is that? Uh, who is that? Is that, is that Frost? Come on, it's time to talk racing, guys. Oh, oh that's right. Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, man. Doug, Fireball, Turnbull. Good morning to you, Doug. I was about to say, uh, Lady uh, T has changed. That's why they turned the video off. They turned the video off because that, of what? That's why I'm not as pretty looking. I'm not as pretty looking as Erica, Erica I'm sure. So. Oh. <laughs> Fireball, how are you doing, man? Uh, man, I'm doing great. You know, I've been waiting to hear from you guys. You'll give you a little off-season uh, NASCAR update, but but uh, but I'm glad the season's uh, firing back up. I'm even happier. It's your, your birthday, man. It's time to celebrate. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for calling in. I do have a NASCAR question for you. You think I don't? The, uh, okay, I'll, I'll say I was going to get asked about Kanye, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to ask you about <laughs> your Sam Smith collection, but uh, that's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte is yes, uh, losing money. Should, mm-hmm. And I just want to ask you, should they, is it time to move it? I Because I had this conversation with uh, one of my boys. We were going to the game, and he didn't know the college Hall of Fame had moved here. And I said, these Hall of Fames are going to have to realize that America has changed. You kind of have to put places where people go. We don't travel to Niagara Falls anymore. You know, it used to be that sentiment where you you went on trips to these places. Should they move to like Vegas or Daytona where people actually go uh, it, on it, vacation? Well, that that's a good point. I think, I think that it made sense. Well, okay, let's just remember that uh, if, if anybody remembers back in 2005, NASCAR Hall of Fame was likely going to be in Atlanta. I remember going to a big rally at Centennial Park. I have a NASCAR Hall of Fame Atlanta T-shirt that they were handing out 10 years ago at that rally. And so I was really in favor of that. And then some things happened. I think, actually, the AJC did an open records request, and they found out how much money the city was trying to kick toward NASCAR to get that thing open. And the whole thing kind of fell apart. And it went to Charlotte, which Charlotte really, Charlotte and Daytona are kind of the two headquarters or homes of NASCAR. So it kind of made sense at the time to do that. But you're you're absolutely right. There's not as much foot traffic, so to speak, or tourism traffic going through Charlotte as there might be Atlanta because Atlanta is such a transportation hub and has all these conventions. Uh, But I'm still not sure. You know, NASCAR is kind of a niche sport. And I think it, it sort of, 
the last few years had this big growing boom and then it's kind of shrunk again. And I think the Hall of Fame was built to with the idea that it would house a lot more people and unfortunately it's not been working out. So I just hope that, I, don't, I, I think if they move that would cost a lot of money also. So I hope that they can just get it figured out in Charlotte. Uh, do you still see Atlanta being a, the city to put it in, or is there another city you feel would be more valuable at this time? I mean, hey, yeah, I'd, I'd love to have it down here in Atlanta for sure. But if you think about it, they use the Hall of Fame to do a lot of driver announcements when they announce whether they're with a new team. They use the drivers to come and promote the Hall of Fame. They do all these different things. And all of the drivers, just about, with the exception of a few, live near Charlotte. All of the race teams, a lot of the NASCAR personnel live near Charlotte. So if you took it and moved it here to Atlanta, they'd be, they would draw probably less star power down toward the Hall of Fame to promote certain things. And so it could be that that would be a canceling factor as to having it here. But there's certainly more people that live in Atlanta and that come to Atlanta. So Atlanta, I think, would be a good place that's not too far from Charlotte if they had to move it. They're race car drivers. They drive 500 miles in a race. <laughs> Charlotte is only hundred and what two hundred miles away. They can do that in like five minutes. I mean, just <laughs> they park. They park that far away from the speedway. <laughs> Tell me what would happen if Jeff Gordon was driving down I eighty five and that number twenty four at one hundred eighty miles an hour. That, <laughs> that would go too well. Uh, as long as he don't have weed on him, he'd be fine. <laughs> Mickey, you got a question? Uh, speaking of Jeff Gordon, he's getting ready to retire, right? Fireball. Uh, that's correct. Oh, that was a big story. Of course, he doesn't like to use the retire word because I think <laughs> he's going to be involved in the sport. And, but, he, but he's planning on ending his Sprint Cup career after the 2015 season. And the big news is that that's the biggest story. But to me, a huge story is who's going to replace him, and that's Chase Elliott, who is Bill Elliott's son, who's someone that I've seen race a bunch of times and have gotten to know over the years because he's from Georgia and raced at Gresham Motorsports Park where I did the track announcing. And Chase is the heir apparent, so he's going to get a, a full year of knowing what's ahead of him there, and he's going to race five cup races this year to prepare for it, and he's the defending Xfinity Series champion. But Jeff Gordon's left an unbelievable mark. It's, it's really akin to Derek Jeter retiring for, for Major League Baseball. I mean, I know that Derek Jeter is so iconic, but really Jeff Gordon to NASCAR fans is just as iconic as Derek Jeter is to, to MLB and the Yankees fans. So it, it's a big deal, and it's certainly it's going to be a year to celebrate, and he's going to probably step out on top of his game, no matter what kind of year he has, because he almost won the championship last year. Well, let me ask you, with football, baseball, other sports, when they retire, either they go into broadcasting or coaching for NASCAR drivers, what are his options after he retired? So some some definitely still do broadcasting, and Jeff Gordon actually just got announced as part of a package this year. He, Kevin Harvick, and Brad Keselowski are going to have a rotating set of appearances on Fox's NASCAR Xfinity Series coverage, which Xfinity Series is what the Nationwide Series was called last year and the years before. It's a AAA division. So on Saturdays, oftentimes, you'll see Jeff Gordon, I think it's, five or six races, something like that, maybe eight races, that he's actually going to be in the broadcast booth with the main announcers. And I don't know if that's that's uh, showing a foreshadowing of things to come. I also think that he wants to be involved in the business of the sport. His team owner, Rick Hendrick, is getting up in years and has mentioned that Jeff Gordon is still going to be around the shop and doing things. So you have to wonder if Jeff Gordon and one day may be involved in the management of Hendrick Motorsports, the team that he's driven for his whole career, too. So he may do both. He may do one or the other. But I definitely don't think he's just going to fade into the sunset. He's just going to stop driving a Sprint Cup car. And I bet he'll run some other races, too. Any change in the uh, the NASCAR championship format? They're going to hold steady to the new plan from last year? Hold on to your seats, guys. It's staying the same. Wow. Can you believe it? Yeah. yeah. And, and they need to. It was really exciting. And, and I think that even though it had some criticism, especially that the whole season boiled down to one race, essentially, I think a lot of people liked it. There was a lot of drama. So the chase is staying the same. NASCAR does have a new complete testing ban. The teams are not allowed to test anywhere this year. So they're going to have to rely a lot on engineering and their practice sessions at the racetracks to to beef up on, on the race cars. So the race cars are a little different this year. They actually have something in them that's called a tapered spacer in the engine, which is going to reduce the horsepower by about 200 and slow the cars down a little bit. So now, the, these things factored in along with a couple of big drivers changing places, including Carl Edwards uh, switching to Joe Gibbs race team this year. It's going to be f some fun story uh, lives to watch this year, which, by the way, the Daytona 500 is in 13 days, 
And just this coming Saturday, they have their big exhibition race down at Daytona, the Sprint Unlimited. So we're going to actually have cars on the racetrack here in just four or five days. Real quickly before you go, because you're saying they're slowing the cars down. Why? I think I think part of the reason is because the cars were getting so fast, they were kind of hard to handle, so to speak, and and they just weren't they weren't passing as well. The the, the racing action wasn't as good, and so I think the idea is that slowing the engines down, slowing things down a little bit will help them. They're not really going to be that much slower. In fact, when I went on the NASCAR media tour two weeks ago, almost every driver said the changes that the, that are being made to the race cars now are really not going to change the action all that much. So uh, that, I think NASCAR is making incremental changes to try to make the racing better. It's always a work in progress with the building of the race cars. All right, Fireball. Thank you for calling in and wishing me a happy birthday. You got it, man. I'm glad to be invited and back on. Hold on. I'm going to get your uh, Visa card number. So I, can go, <laughs> so I can go shopping. So just hold the line. We're going to get that. Doug I'll Fire- shoot you the money. All right. hey, <laughs> hey, Fireball, get him what I got him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fireball. Take care, guys. All See right. you. Happy birthday. Doug Fireball, Turnbull, uh, Daytona 500 uh, next weekend. As he said, it's just so interesting how you want the car to go slower now. <laughs> I thought Ricky Bobby said he wanted to go fast, and now shake and bite, they, shake and bite. <laughs> they want to go slower. <laughs> um, I don't know, but at least they're not changing the chase format, which means they're not changing how they get to the winner. They're going to try to run back, you know, which is good because most sports change rules every year. Like NFL probably won't have a. They have a no talking policy <laughs> next year. But we'll be back more to Sports Talk Show right after this. <laughs> more of the Sports Junk Show with Wayne Gandy coming up next. Visit Nally Ford Sandy Springs on Roswell Road and tell them you heard this ad on the Sports Junk Show for the best deals on the all-new 2015 Fords. Like the 15 Ford Expedition Platinum, Focus Titanium, and save even more on the 2014 Edge SE. Nally Ford Sandy Springs, 7555 Roswell Road. Or visit nallyford.com. Be sure to tell them you heard about it on the Sports Junk Show. That's nallyford.com. This week's episode, Rattlesnake at the Pond. Oh, Johnny, skipping rocks at the pond sure is fun. Hey, look, a moving stick. That ain't a stick. That's a rattlesnake. Sassy, we're in danger. Good idea, Sassy. Go get Mr. Gunderson. You will in a second, but first you'd like to tell us something we may not know about animal shelters in the United States? It's getting close, Sassy. Approximately 8 million pets enter shelters each year? The majority of which are in shelters because of owner-related issues that the animals have no control over? Sassy the Rattlesnake! Save us, Sassy! What, Sassy? You wish you were videotaping this? Sassy! Sassy is brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Remember, adopt! This Sports Shock Health Update brought to you by JNA Naturals. There's a lot of truth behind the words, you are what you eat. JNA Naturals promotes the benefits of vegan and raw foods diet. Many are unaware that the standard American diet is one of the top leading causes of many chronic illnesses and cancers today. Much of the foods many Americans eat are saturated with fats, sugars, and toxic chemicals and preservatives that are detrimental to our health. Only the purest ingredients create holistic remedies for body, mind, and soul. Visit janaturals.com. Your busy lifestyle demands performance. Energy drinks and shots can be an acquired taste and can cause jitters, crashes, and even stomach discomfort. The new 8-Hour Energy Patch is the natural, sugar, and calorie-free alternative to energy drinks, shots, and even coffee. It's the only energy that sticks. Just two time-release patches will keep you going at work, the gym, or even a night out. No unpleasant taste, jitters, or crashes. For a 12-hour boost, just add another patch. For only four hours, use one. You're in charge. Visit 8HourEnergy.com for more info and your free Example: Do not exceed three patches per day. And now back to the sports job, Wayne Gandy. Show. I'm the 
boy Shot Wayne again. The beginning, I don't know, man. That Earth, Wind, and Fire. Man. <laughs> You know, it just moves me a little more than Stevie, you know. That earth wind makes me want to have some fun. Want oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Want the sun to come out. And... There there was some uh, ice going over a cooler full of beer when the earth wind and fire <laughs> was being played. And right. Stevie Wonder, like I said, he was a mixture of different types of moods or activities around mm. the house, but... Earth, Wind, and Fire was definitely get up and move something. Either move a refrigerator and clean behind it, right, or move that cooler close to the card table. <laughs> so and pass the the barbecue sauce. Exactly. Yes, and for my slab of ribs. Well, back then you only got like three bones and a whole bunch of bread, but you know now I enjoy. Because <laughs> you was too young yeah. for for a whole slab. Yeah. Well, yeah, they didn't like to give up their pork back then. Right. But uh, I am very selfish with my ribs. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't laugh. I was just letting you know. I thought I should have a moment there with you. I mean, as long as you give me one, that's been good. See, you, you missed the whole thing about me being selfish with my ribs. <laughs> she might as well go with sauce and bread. <laughs> uh, basically. A couple, a, couple, a couple slices of bread, some sauce. Get thank you. Some, thank you, Doug. Coleslaw. <laughs> Doug Fireball Turnbull for calling in. Um, as I was saying real quickly before we move on, uh, the Hall of Fame. I was going to the uh, the game to see the Hawks Golden State Friday. Me and Jerome Bettis, big ups to you, bruh, uh, for making the Hall of Fame, Football Hall of Fame. Uh, he didn't know that the College Hall of Fame had moved here. And I told him it seems like all the Hall of Fames, because when was the last time we any of us been to Canton? Yeah, true. Right. You know, and, and <laughs> if you're trying to, I told him one thing would be good would move, be to move that so you can generate more income to even give to the veterans. You know, you, you keep hearing trying to circulate more money to older players and things like that. Well, you move it to Atlanta, you move it to New York, places where people actually travel to. I mean, because yeah. Canton uh, sounds like another fictional place like Narnia or, <laughs> or, or, or Smaug. <laughs> It sounds like uh, some place that <laughs> no one has ever really visited in right. reality. In reality, and I was but, and I was saying the same thing when I saw this about NASCAR. I'm like, wow. When was the last time just a, a traveler has been to Charlotte? Who goes to Charlotte? Well, you have to think of the except on a real appointment or job. Somebody is right. a reason, not just you. People come to Atlanta just to come to Atlanta. You well, go to New York just to go to New York. You go to L.A., Vegas, uh, even Chicago, Miami. Right. You don't just go pick up and go to St. Louis. Well, look at look at <laughs> like, the model of vacationing now. It's that all inclusive type thing for people who would travel to Canton to the Football Hall of Fame. After you see that, that's it. Right. Right. So unless you're going to see that four days in a row, <laughs> then there's really no reason to travel that far to see just one attraction when you can come to a city where today you could see the Football Hall of Fame. Tomorrow you can go see the King Center mm -hmm. or uh, go see a game. It, it's a lot of stuff to do, and now with all of these amusement parks and themed vacations, mm -hmm. nobody wants to just go see one attraction, right. and right. they're going to end up closing down as a result of it. Right. Like you said, you can come here. The aquarium is is four steps away mm -hmm. from the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame is ten steps away from Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola right. is six steps away from the um, – after the trap. The civil rights. <laughs> the, the civil trap. rights. And the trap. Yeah. You can go toward the trap. No, they, no, they moved the, the, they, no, they move the trap two blocks over. Oh, okay. Yeah, because they're right. building the stadium building. now. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. And I'm they closed down out. Andrew Young to, to, to traffic. So, yeah, it's just a pedestrian throughway. You're right. You're right. You're right. It, 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 it's been a couple weeks since I've been through there. Yeah, you it's two blocks over now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Saturday, Kentucky, Florida, if you missed it, great game. Uh, Kentucky number one, they're still undefeated. Uh, but this uh, Willie Carley Stein, this dunk he had in this game, probably a top five selection in this coming NBA draft. Uh, the six, I want to put him at about 6'10, uh, but Kentucky got about eight 6'10 players. I mean, <laughs> right. John Calipari got oh, too much talent. He rotates his team by five. Right. He's the coach. That's how much talent we got. You five right. come, and them five go. That's, amazing. That's how he rotates. There's no right. two crazy. at a time. I sent a whole nother five in that really could be starting at a 
another college. <laughs> but right. and think, think about how long <laughs> those guys will last in the NBA without an mm. entire college career of their bodies being beat up as a starting five. We come in and out almost like in professional hockey. They may skate for 30 seconds before they send in a replacement. Right. Right. And these guys are doing the same thing. Their bodies will hold out mm -hmm. for a long, long time. When they get to the NBA, it's like they'll have fresh legs. Yeah, and it's almost like a, a recruiting tool. Yeah, Like, yeah. hey, we're, yeah. we're still exactly. going to get you ready, but you're not going to be worn out. You're not going to be worn out. And that's end. what Which I was thinking you, is limits a recruiting your tool. injury, too. Right. Uh, but this dunk right here by Willie Carly Stein, you know, you have to say all three names now. And you know, <laughs> and, and, and why? Why is it that did, did he marry a guy or something? Why? Why is he? What's with the hyphenated last name, Mr. Carly Stein? What is? What is that about? See the dunk right I'm here? somewhat confused. On the Sports Jock page, if you're watching, uh, that's him in the blue. Ah, he's something that that big Kenny. Ah, he's coming from the SEC side, big Kenny. Ouch. Uh, I just wanted to show you that, Big Kenny. It's some college uh, basketball, uh, which is hard to transfer over. Uh, as I said, football has become so huge that we are losing sight of college basketball um, because mainly football is on almost every day. When college, It used to be college football filled in. I mean, college basketball would fill in Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, but you know, so you was able to stop. Can we and see catch the up? video again? There's a there's a certain point when you know this is about to happen. Oh, uh, <laughs> right there. Uh, well, well, you're playing it, and he starts to go up. Run the video a little bit. Uh, he's up there right now. <laughs> I mean, he's okay. Now stop. Well, right about when he starts to jump. The defender makes the decision, I've got to do something. Mm -hmm. I know it's not going to work. <laughs> I, I know this is this is going to get me in a highlight film, but I just can't stand here. It's like watching your little brother getting beat up. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just can't stand here. i got to do something. So yeah, uh, I mean, He's reaching. I mean, this is Vince Carterish. Can we say that? No? Carterish. This, yeah. this is half man, half amazing. I mean, he... <laughs> He, he literally, for you people that are not looking on the page, uh, if you've ever seen a foul line, he jumps two feet in after the foul line. And he's seven, he's long, and this is why I said he's a top five pick. Um, he's, he's, he reminds you of a young Anthony Davis, tall, long, ring, rangy. In college, one thing. Oh, a young Anthony Davis who's all of, what, 24? <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple years younger. <laughs> yeah. See, and that's the thing with going to a Kentucky right. is they go, and before they're 25, they've been in the NBA four right. or five years. Yes. Because uh -huh. they go, they do the one and the done, and now we're saying things like a young – Anthony, Anthony Davis, Davis. <laughs> who uh, really just went to the NBA two Yesterday. seasons ago. Yeah, yeah. He, he's 19 talking about, you know, I'm an OG in this right now. <laughs> oh, man. But I just had to show you that play. Uh, last Wednesday was National Recruiting Day. The deadline came and passed uh, for college football. The recruiting classes, the top 10. LSU is at 10. Texas at 9. Georgia, 8. Auburn 7, Ohio State 6, Tennessee 5, Clemson 4, USC 3, Florida State 2, and the tie to Alabama is 1. Uh, when I saw this poll, the most interesting thing was Oregon wasn't in the top 10. And Oregon played in the national title game against Ohio State. I was very surprised that they actually, their class was ranked 15th. Uh, this year, um, I did go to Vic Kenny selfie. I ended up up at six o'clock in the morning. I had to get to the school um, at my daughter's school. One of the kids in the last moment decided not to go to Georgia. And at 10 o'clock Tuesday night, he decided to go to Auburn. His name is Darius Slayton. Um, I think you got those two pictures. Uh, he's the guy in the blue shirt right there, yellow tie, and um, my phone text came through talking about, can you help us bring some gear up here? 
<laughs> so, so we can have something on the table because the mom at that point and the dad at that point had nothing to display from Auburn. And they were announcing that set that uh, Wednesday morning at seven. Um, so I got up and uh, I hope I didn't have break any violations by sliding that two grand. Uh, but, <laughs> now, I was about to say with all of that, I mean, some last I you minute. Said the mic was off. <laughs> With that last minute decision making, okay, last minute decision making. Right. Look, so how much can Auburn actually give us for him to come there? That is not the sports jocks way. Wink, <laughs> wink under the shades. Uh, but no, Darius Slayton, a guy that I, um, the whole season for GAC, who went undefeated until the state championship in which they lost to uh, Benedictine. Um, but Darius Slayton was their playmaker. He's about 6'2", and he's gained about 20 pounds. Uh, but he definitely had star potential, and I'm glad he chose to go to Auburn. But as I said, Georgia's their rank, their class is 8. Auburn is 7. Um, one thing that did come up also at that, we were talking football at halftime of the Hawks-Golden State game. Um, everybody's interested in how did Mark Rick, the head coach of Georgia, get an extension and a raise. They, they don't remember Georgia being in the title game yeah. or any of that. Or any of that. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, nobody understand how you get an extension and a four hundred thousand dollar year raise. Wow! And you actually won nothing. You didn't even win the <laughs> SEC East. Uh, hey, you might have hacked Nothing somebody's knows. computer. We'll be back. More of the Sports Jock Show right after this. Atlanta Olive Oil Company is this week's Sports Jock of the Week sponsor. Located at 1133 Huff Road, Suite F, Atlanta, Georgia. Visit them this week for samples of the Sports Jock Oil of the Month, Black Walnut BV. Atlanta Olive Oil Company is more than just a place to buy gourmet-infused olive oils and balsamic vinegars. It's a unique gathering place for tastings and intimate settings. Located at 1133 Huff Road, Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta Olive Oil Company, proud sponsor of the Sports Shock Show. Your busy lifestyle demands performance. Energy drinks and shots can be an acquired taste and can cause jitters, crashes, and even stomach discomfort. The new 8-Hour Energy Patch is the natural, sugar, and calorie-free alternative to energy drinks, shots, and even coffee. It's the only energy that sticks. Just two time-release patches will keep you going at work, the gym, or even a night out. No unpleasant taste, jitters, or crashes. For a 12-hour boost, just add another patch. For only four hours, use one. You're in charge. Visit 8HourEnergy.com for more info and your free example do not exceed three patches per day this sports shock health update brought to you by jna naturals there's a lot of truth behind the words you are what you eat jna naturals promotes the benefits of vegan and raw foods diet many are unaware that the standard american diet is one of the top leading causes of many chronic illnesses and cancers today much of the foods many americans eat are saturated with fats sugars and toxic chemicals and preservatives that are detrimental to our health only the purest ingredients create holistic remedies for body mind and soul visit janaturals.com it's not always easy being a dad. Where's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. What? What do you mean she's not coming? But it's always worth it. It's a fairy princess. You design. Grooms. Zinco pen. Yeah. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Visit Nally Ford Sandy Springs on Roswell Road and tell them you heard this ad on the Sports Shock Show for the best deals on the all-new 2015 Fords. Like the 15 Ford Expedition Platinum, Focus Titanium, and save even more on the 2014 Edge SE. Nally Ford Sandy Springs, 7555 Roswell Road. Or visit nallyford.com. Be sure to tell them you heard about it on the Sports Shock Show. That's nallyford.com. Enough is enough! I have had it! Why so serious? 
and we hold the world ransom for Wayne Gandy. Excuse me while I whip this out. Show me. Broadcasting live from the Armada FM studios in Atlanta, Georgia. This, this is the Sports Chalk Show with Wayne Gandy. You may fill me up, fill me up, yeah, can you fill me up, yeah, you won't break me down, I've come too far, come too far, yeah, yeah, I've come too far, yeah, to just throw in the towel, it's a new day, I'ma, I'ma do it, yeah, I'm gonna go all the way, you may fill me up. Welcome back to the Sports Shock Show, I'm the Sports Shock Wayne. Gandy, uh, once again, before we go on, thank you, Fireball, for calling in. Uh, we will be talking to you very, very soon. NASCAR season on the horizon. Uh, as you see, the sun is setting later, which means that spring is coming back, which means the pollen is coming back, which means I'm going to need me a face mask this year. Uh, walk around like the Ebola scare. Uh, that's how the pollen affects me. Um, before we go on in this hour, we will be talking mostly NFL, a lot of different uh, criminal activity. Got a lot of criminal activity. You know, we we have a specialist in that field that we like to bring on every week um, to give us the ins and out of that honey bun. When the last time you had a honey bun? Two days ago, you had a honey bun? Really? Wow. I haven't had a honey bun in a while. Might try one of those today. Do they still make Twinkies? Yeah. I hated sure. Twinkies. That was like the worst thing. Yeah, I hated Twinkies. I would always choose something else, the little oatmeal cake. Yeah, I like the oatmeal cake. But uh, how did we get on that? Get back to sports. <laughs> Man, back to sports. <laughs> Real quickly, uh, for you that missed the show about two weeks ago, we reported that a gentleman over in Cobb County uh, got a ticket for his quarter pounder with cheese. Um, Harris, Madison, Turner, they did drop those charges. Just want to let y'all, you know, FYI, just bringing you up. Um, we knew they would not stick. Can't actually arrest people for a quarter pounder and cheese. <laughs> What y'all need to do is put that lady that ran into that little 19-year-old boy from Kennesaw State under the jail. Uh, she ran through the wall of the Buffalo Wild Wings and hit the kid at the table with the car. 67-year-old lady um, said she was backing up parking. How is that? What kind of... what? <laughs> you crashed through a wall and hit, killed somebody inside the restaurant. And you was parking? What I don't know what happened in that situation, but it was a interesting way to go. Um, some triple hot, and the car hit you. That's just messed up, though. You sitting there, you dealing with this hot sauce, and then the car comes through a wall and hits you. I guess that'll be on the next Final Destination. Do they still make those movies, Final Destination? Uh, uh, they need to stop it, though. And I do have some breaking news for any of you out there listening. Uh, after doing a little research, after watching the Grammys, um, Saya, is that her name, the music? Sia. I did discover that that is Rihanna. You're going to find out later. It's going to be Rihanna that's playing the role of Sia. Yeah, all y'all looking like, yeah. You, did you notice doing it? Did, you didn't really see Rihanna nowhere. And Rihanna didn't have her hair done, you know, because she was trying to, well, that's okay. I know y'all think this. Have you seen Sia? Yeah. You don't have to see her face. Exactly. Yeah, see? <laughs> all right. Okay. Y'all have to? No, they haven't? No, I wouldn't. No, I didn't need them to talk on the mic openly. I can hear them without them hearing me. <laughs> Happy birthday. Well, thank you there. Everybody wants to. Uh, no gifts, though. They don't say anything about check FedEx on these texts. They just want to say happy birthday. Uh, but is that for me? Yes, sir. Okay, who is that? Surprise. That's his name? It's a surprise, yes. Oh. Ready? Sure. Big Hello? Happy birthday, big fellow. Happy birthday, big 
fella. Let me see. I ain't been called big fella since 83. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who, well, who am I, mean, I speaking with? I mean, this is Ryan McNeil. You, you, you're much bigger than me, so you know you're a big fella. Now y'all talking about recruiting violations? Ryan Mack is on the phone, and y'all know where he went, right? The U, the most infamous recruiting violation school in the country. You see how quiet he got? Cricket, 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 cricket. Well, good morning to you, Ryan. Good morning, man. But technically, <laughs> technically, it wasn't recruiting violations. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, you know, when we, when, when everything, uh, when the smoke cleared, uh, you know, we were vindicated. I mean, hell, the NCA had, you know, uh, a worse record than we did. You know, when it came down to it, you know, they, <laughs> you know, you know, they can even get an investigation right. Right. right, and so you know we self-imposed, uh, you know, some sanctions on ourselves, and you know we beyond that, and hopefully, you know, this year, uh, cross fingers that uh, you know we'll be back on top where we belong. Um, you know, want the last to, two years, huh? Y'all want me to translate what he said? <laughs> he said what we did was we pulled what some sm- was. we pulled some smoke and mirrors, and we f- reflected back on the NCAA, and then they forgot about us. <laughs> And now we back going now, Ryan McNeil. What's going on, man? I can't call it, man. I'm grinding. I'm grinding. I'm 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 good, man. How you doing? And it's funny when rich people say they're grinding, isn't it? It's so funny. <laughs> what what is a rich person's grind? Soy milk or skim? What what is the what is the uh, or, or, or or almond milk or you know organic? You know, it's, 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 it's hard to find organic food, you know, these days, man. Uh, yeah, don't bring it by my house. I don't eat organic. I plan on dying gluten in. Not gluten free. I got you. But uh, good. I got you. thank you for calling, man. Uh, you are welcome, man. Anytime. I hope you have a happy birthday, wonderful day. We got to catch up, man. Yeah, hold hold the line. I'm gonna get your credit card information. Um, go up here to Saks and get me a gift, and uh, I'll email you the receipt. Ah, uh, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, Ryan McNeil, uh, former teammate of mine, played at the U, played with me with the Rams. Let me bring back my co-host. Uh, Big Kenny, the funny man himself, Shot Town's finest, uh, who uh, we do know went to Southern Miss, but they never recruited anyone illegally. Uh, they just were so happy. <laughs> uh, but Brett Favre, it's the home of Brett Favre. You have to always say that. A legendary quarterback. Is your, is your mic back on? I can't. They don't plan on bringing you back on? It, there you go. Okay, there we go. You, you notice how every time you go, let me get your credit card information, you hear that. Uh, <laughs> everybody hangs up. Uh, I just want to say, for the guy that got let off, they dropped the charges about giving him a ticket for eating the quarter pounder with cheese. I cannot believe that Cobb County dropped murder charges because meat is murder. <laughs> For all the vegetarians who think like I do, unite. Meat is murder. <laughs> Petition to have those charges reinstated. And please stop killing animals and yourselves. Uh, as far as Saya being Rihanna, the only way to truly find out is see if Chris Brown beat her up. Uh, I'm just saying. It is 10 o'clock. It's okay. I'm just saying. If he jump on it, then we know that's Rihanna. That's that's Rihanna. We know right away. (laughs) uh, Selfie, you know this Saya girl, correct? I do. I I have her music on my phone. Okay. You like her music? Yeah, I think she's an awesome singer. And I actually, someone else has said the same thing to me about that, Mm. saying that she sounded a lot like Rihanna. And they wondered if she actually was a songwriter for her and all the Mm -hmm. above. So, um, yeah. But yeah, she's a great singer, and you know she she hides her face because she doesn't want to be famous. Although she so, technically is famous. In my theory, could I have some legitimacy to that theory? Am I am I on the right page? I, would you I, put I, that I, past Rihanna? Is what I'm asking you. No, I wouldn't put that past. Okay, her. I, I would definitely well, say she. Probably I, I mean, would. think about it. So, what does Rihanna only want to be famous as Rihanna? You know what I mean? It's not like <laughs> it's not like she was wasn't famous already. It's okay. I'm just still the famous Rihanna, mm. and I got another number one song. But well, you know how uh, is it a tax shelter being Sia or something like that? <laughs> then Beyonce have some person she was supposed to. Yeah, have but been. then Beyonce's weird. Sasha Fierce or somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah she Sasha did Fierce. that. that that's drugs, and, and David Bowie, when David Bowie first started, he, he was, was Ziggy Stardust. Right. But that was uh, his 
alter ego. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was back before you could just come out and be Michael Sam. Right. And yeah. Adele, Adele, you know, Adele. Sam Smith came out. The sit show was Adele. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is it too? That's wrong, too? <laughs> it's about the same Y'all wasn't thinking the same thing? Sam Adele Smith and Adele are the same, same person. People. No? A male version yeah. of her, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. I, you think, know. I definitely thought that. He finally decided to come out as himself and stop right. being Adele. <laughs> Yeah, you ain't seen Adele lately, have you? No. Okay, Sam no. Smith. See? Yeah, Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> you don't really Bruce, notice Bruce that. Bruce Jenner did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's sports, though. It's sports. <laughs> oh, man, let me show you this picture before we go to break right here. Picture two, Reverend Ryan. And we see that. How did this conversation go, Big Kenny? Uh, uh, selfie. Y'all, yeah, can y'all give me some of this? Marshawn Lynch and Snoop Dogg. If you're not watching the page, <laughs> this is after the Super Bowl. Snoop is hanging with Marshawn. Marshawn throwing up a gang sign. Uh. Snoop D.O. Dizzle uh, is rocking uh, the Marshawn Lynch shirt. They both got the dr- the dreads down. I can tell you exactly how this on. conversation For, went. Well, well before I'm, we'll come back after the break because I don't want you to have to shorten it. But you can tell me since you both are oh, it's a tasters short, it, it's of a marijuana. Short, it's, it's a short conversation. <laughs> it was a this, short is con- how, this is how the conversation okay. went. Sup, cuz? <laughs> Ain't none, cuz. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, cuz? <laughs> Ain't none, cuz. <laughs> and <laughs> Let's take a and, 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 yeah, and that's all they did from the rest of the night. Just S- selfie. How high did they get? <laughs> oh, well, Snoop Dogg, we already know. He probably walked in. <laughs> uh, Marshawn Lynch, I said they got real high there. Well, Dogg, <laughs> they, they got Snoop Beast Dogg. Mode 2.0. Real high. <laughs> high. That's how high they got. <laughs> we'll be back for the Sports Talk Show right after this. Then <laughs> that time I went and said goodbye. Now I'm back and not ashamed to cry. Don't go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gantry is coming up next. The Sports Jock Red Zone is sponsored by Life Marketing, the official marketing company of the Sports Jock Show. We create and manage top performing social media campaigns for businesses. Life Marketing, driving success, guaranteeing positive results and return on investment. Your busy lifestyle demands performance. Energy drinks and shots can be an acquired taste and can cause jitters, crashes, and even stomach discomfort. The new 8-Hour Energy Patch is the natural, sugar, and calorie-free alternative to energy drinks, shots, and even coffee. It's the only energy that sticks. Just two time-release patches will keep you going at work, the gym, or even a night out. No unpleasant taste, jitters, or crashes. For a 12-hour boost, just add another patch. For only four hours, use one. You're in charge. Visit 8HourEnergy.com for more info and your free sample. Do not exceed three patches per day. Visit Nally Port Seti Springs on Roswell Road and tell them you heard this ad on the Sports Junk Show for the best deals on the all-new 2015 Fords. Like the 15 Ford Expedition Platinum, Focus Titanium, and save even more on the 2014 Edge SE. Nally Ford Sandy Springs, 7555 Roswell Road. Or visit nallyford.com. Be sure to tell them you heard about it on the Sports Junk Show. That's nallyford.com. Hey Dad, how do you throw a curveball? How do you build a fort? How do refrigerators run? How do fish learn how to swim? Kids ask a lot of questions. How high can you jump? But you don't have to know every answer. How many phone numbers are there? Because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. How do cell phones work? There are thousands of children in foster care who don't need every question answered. What's electricity? They just need you. What's the moon made of? For more information on how you can adopt, go to adoptuskids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. And now, back to the sports job, Wayne Gant. Which is 
Sports Shock Show. I'm the Sports Shock Wayne Gandy. We were talking a little NFL as we left. Marshawn Lynch hanging out with Snoop D. O. Dizzle after the Super Bowl. Uh, we have them so high. Hanging out with a dude named yes. Beast Mode smoking on Beast Mode. <laughs> <laughs> So, so high. And Big Kenny, you brought up Bruce Jenner, the 1976 decathlon winner. Uh, he was in a car accident in which uh, one person was killed. Seven others were hurt. Uh, I think Bruce walked away. Um, any? Should we give any talk about him becoming... A woman, I, I did read something that he's supposed to be going through a transformation yeah, he, or something. He, he's on oh. his journey. Um, he, he just wants to be an old woman now because he's like 65, I, 66 years I, old. I, I just think that's a testament to what uh, Chris Kardashian can do to you. you know what I mean? <laughs> Not only is he through with her, he's through with women so bad that, look, I'm going to be a woman. I'm going <laughs> to I want to just manipulate somebody's life and just destroy it the way she's destroyed mine. Because so. until this accident, I was never going to even bring this up because it just sound like some uh, reality show yeah, father type. Some old yeah, he's he's a, he's actually uh, in a sense. And then you hear about the accident, and you have to hit something on it. Um, I mean, what? I mean, when do you decide? Let me transform myself. He looks scary too. I don't know. What is he doing to his face? Which, which I must say, was like the theme of last night. Do, do, other than other than Annie Lennox, every other woman over the age of nineteen seemed like they had Botox. Yeah. Is uh, do we have a picture of Bruce Jenner? I think we just show one with the stiff face. Uh, be, because w w what I'm saying is, to me. There are some things that you, you strive for, and then there's some things that you leave alone. Okay, Bruce, I get it. Maybe you're different on the inside, but it's been 68 years that you've been living as Bruce Jenner. Mm -hmm. You might want to stay Bruce Jenner because if we could find a picture of him, uh, do you really want, uh, do you really, is, is this <laughs> really the woman you want to date you know what i mean <laughs> you're gonna change into a woman and and where are you gonna find a date bruce it's, look at him it's starting yeah. to look like ozzy osborne a little bit I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, it's starting to look like ozzy and harriet i don't know <laughs> what's going on with him but um it's ridiculous he, he looks kind of spooky to me got you what yes. is all on that paper over there man i can't see that okay well let's talk to mary Kay. Mary Kay? yes Good morning. Can she hear me? Hello. Good morning to you, Miss Mary Kay Cabot. Hey, how are you? I'm doing just great. Thank you for calling into the Sports Talk Show. Uh, Mary Kay, she is a writer for the Cleveland Plains uh, dealer. She covers everything Cleveland Browns. As you know, Cleveland Browns have had a lot of off-season stories already. Uh, and the season off-season just kind of started uh, over the last couple of weeks. First, Mary Kay uh, is this the end of the road for George, Josh Gordon in a Cleveland Browns uniform after the suspension? Well, you know what? It very well might be. They were already reaching the end of their rope before this happened. Uh, he wasn't showing uh, the kind of work ethic uh, that they were expecting. Their kind of play like a Brown mantra. Uh, he just wasn't following that. So uh, I do think that, that they're very close to the end of the rope here, but they're going to hang on to him for now because if he can make a comeback, uh, you know, perhaps they can still either uh, get him back on the field for themselves or uh, maybe try to trade him for a draft pick. When he comes back, being on the program, uh, he will be on that last step, correct? After this, suspension is for life, or have they changed no, that rule? They have changed that rule. They're, they're, they don't have the lifetime ban anymore. If you come back and you get suspended again, it's either indefinitely or, again, for a minimum of a year. So uh, all, you know, might not be lost. Is you do you think that um, when he does come back, how does him and Johnny Manziel fit as a tandem? It seems like two, uh, uh, like the blind leading the blind. At least at this point, I know Johnny went into rehab, but can you keep somebody like this around a Johnny Manziel? Well, it depends. I and mean, if they're both working a, a good program and adhering to the things that they're supposed to be doing, uh, you know, then 
you know, perhaps they can function well together and, and make a career of it. But if they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, then, you know, then it's not a good combo. So it all depends on how these guys come out of their current situation. Do you think any of Johnny Manziel checking into rehab, do you think the team maybe asked something of him like that, or this was totally him? Well, I think that uh, the team set forth some clear parameters on, on what it expected from him, and, you know, that included him, uh, you know, kind of knocking it off in that regard. So I would I would say that uh, they they probably, you know, influenced and, and made it, you know, made it very clear what they expected of him, and then he took it upon himself to say, you know what, in order to do that, here's what I need to go do. Uh, Mayor Kay, good morning. This is Big Kenny. Before an NFL player is drafted, to my understanding, there are all kinds of scouting reports. There are psychological evaluations. Should Cleveland suggest that they did not know Johnny Manziel was prone to substance abuse or alcohol abuse before he came to Cleveland? Or was it you know, something they were hoping would just work itself out? They knew. I mean, everyone knew. I mean, these things were uh, in all kinds of different reports and things like that. So uh, they, they knew what was going on. I think they just felt like, you know, he had kind of turned the corner. They they bought into a lot of the things that he was saying in the four or five months leading up to the draft. It seemed like maybe he had sowed some of those college wild oats and was ready to buckle down a little bit. Uh, unfortunately for them, you know, that didn't turn out to be the case. And, um, you know, I, I think they felt that at number 22, it was a risk worth taking. It could be almost like a boom or bust proposition, and they weren't going to be into it for a ton of money. It was only about $8 million over four years. So if it didn't work out, it wasn't a huge, huge financial commitment. And if it did work out, uh, they could have been sitting pretty. Mayor Kay, it doesn't seem like the organization as a whole is offering um, Johnny a lot of protection. It seems like... Uh, they making sure Johnny, you see Johnny Manziel as himself and them as the Cleveland Browns. Uh, should they offer him more uh, guarding, trying to deflect some of these bullets that are being shot at him? You know, I think they've pretty much done you know all that they can. I don't know that. I mean, you can't hold the guy's hand. You can't uh, you know babysit him every minute of the day. You have to you know you have to let them go live their lives. They're adults. They can make their own choices and things like that. So. I do think that, you know, they offered uh, support. They offered, you know, all the help uh, that they possibly could. But, you know, Johnny just was really into the party scene. So uh, he he just wasn't ready for it at that time. I think he is probably now. Uh, The NFL has been investigating the Browns, Brian Hoyer, the general manager, over this text message investigation. Where is that at, at this point? You know, I would expect that they'll wrap that up, you know, within the next, um, either this week or next week, I would expect that the Browns would hear something about whether or not uh, he is uh, suspended, you know, Ray Farmer suspended for three or four games and then they lose a draft pick and those kind of things. Uh, I do think that it's headed that way. Um, whether or not it'll happen, you know, that remains to be seen for sure, but uh, it seems to me it should happen in quite soon. Do you think uh, it will cost the GM Ray Farmer any time or he, is he safe in this? Well, I think it'll cost him, you know, some some games in terms of the suspension. But I do, at this point, I think that, that Jimmy Haslam will stick by him. Uh, as long as he was just, you know, offering opinions and things like that on, on play calls and personnel and really not so much, uh, you know, anything that would give the Browns a competitive advantage. All right. Well, thank you, Mary Kay, for calling in and helping us out. Uh, I'm quite sure we'll hear more about Johnny Menzel as this, this offseason goes. Uh, and we all here hope that at a 21-year-old, 22-year-old does find the help that he needs. But thank you for calling in. Thanks, guys. All right. Mary Kay Cabot, the Plains, uh, Cleveland Plains dealer, uh, clevelandplains.com. Uh, do, do, big, big at Kenny, 21, do, we, do you really want help? <laughs> well, my thing was, was like I always said, um, we keep laughing at this in, in, in a lot of society now is hurry up and go to pro. Hurry up. And, but yeah. as I said, even with Jameis Winston, there's a lot of growing up. I think we can all even not being in sports that third year of college. I think we all can contest that. We start doing different things. It, it, we all kind of put that party life and start realizing 
Would, would, would you not say that? Like, <laughs> yeah, I started doing some different things about that third year. Yeah, it was definitely <laughs> upgraded my game right. a little bit. Uh, Will you shake off some of that kidness of yeah. uh, your acting, uh, how you go to school, how you approach, you, you know, you start realizing, hey, this trip is about halfway over now. Right. So whatever I'm going to make of it, I have to start doing. And, and just like she said, they're not going to hold your hand. And that's what I'm trying to get young players, young people to understand there was a time where they would hold your hand. Now it's, hey, you come here, you got to get it. However, but, and we're talking about, like, as Big Kenny as everybody knew Johnny liked to party. Well, you thought he was going to go to Cleveland and stop? He jet set party. He is, you know, he's that guy that the game ends. As soon as the meeting's over, he's on a plane. Because you told me as long as I'm back here Wednesday at 7.30 a.m., I'm gone. And that's why we saw even at college, he'd be in different cities. Like, I could have sworn y'all had a game. Aren't y'all in school? That's how everybody found out he was taking online classes. Because he was in certain places when you're thinking, well, don't you have a chem <laughs> a chemistry right, class? Right. <laughs> How's you at the heat game in Miami <laughs> on a Wednesday? So some of this has to do with everybody is not ready to go and accept their true responsibility, especially as a quarterback. It, it, it doesn't get any heavier load yeah. in sports than to go and pose to be the franchise quarterback on any team. So we're going to go to break. we we'll come back. 888. This man keeps hanging up these signs. Would you like me to read that out? No, that's for you. Oh, okay. Well, if it's a surprise, then that's just supposed to be a surprise. Oh, he said it with a little indignancy yeah. in his voice. Yeah. No, that's for you. Uh oh. Yeah. I keep telling you, Brian Don't Williams. I that, understand, man. man, why you had to take a little break. I might come out there and join you in Nantucket. Be back with more of the Sports Jock Show right after this. More of the Sports Junk Show with Wayne Gaddy coming up next. We're going to play fast, we're going to take what we can get, gentlemen. The NFL Hour here on the Sports Junk Show is sponsored by Life Marketing Group, the official marketing company of the Sports Junk Show. We create and manage top-performing social media campaigns for businesses. Life Marketing, driving success, guaranteeing positive results and return on investment. Over here. What? Right here in the back. Where? Over by the fence. You? The bike? Yeah, the bike. Right in the grass where the kids left me a while ago. You know how lonely it is being left day after day, not being able to cruise the reservation? Pardon me? Remember when you got me for the kids? You told them, no, you kids go have fun, enjoy the outdoors, and be careful. Mm, yeah? I really miss it, especially when they put that playing card in my spokes, and I made a really cool sound the faster we went. Mm. Well, could you get my tires a little air, dust off my seat, and remind the kids how fun I still am? Okay. <coughs> oh, you are dusty. Yeah, and I may need a couple of bolts tightened too. Now let's go! As Native American parents and caregivers, our encouragement to healthy lifestyles for our kids is helping them get outside and play. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov slash Indian Country. Brought to you by USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. And now, back to the sports job, Wayne Gant. Now, it's time to present the Jack of the Week on the Sports Jack Show, where we highlight an exceptional athlete that has taken their game to the next level. Welcome back to the Sports Shock Show. I'm the Sports Shock Wayne Candy. Uh, we have a little battle going on between Stevie, I Can't See You Wonder, and Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, 
everything Stevie's talking about is love, man. It's it's, it's too deep to, you know, part-time lover. And <laughs> I want to love you to the sky. Earth, wind, and fire. I don't know. I'm still giving a little edge here, Big Kenny. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll see by the end of the show. We'll let Selfie, who probably has never heard any of their music. <laughs> yes, I except can. riding around with but her But now, dad. at least <laughs> Stevie does sing. A, he, he rarely, he sings, he sings about love, falling out of love, or the need for love, or what happens when love has been abandoned, the abandoning of hate. Just mm-hmm. all this stuff is... <laughs> It's kind of love. I don't think you've ever heard Stevie really angry, like you know, no, don't make me, bu- don't make me bust a cap. Uh, <laughs> if I have to get it one more time, I think uh, somebody gonna be <laughs> somebody gonna be sorry if I if I have to listen for you one more time. <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna bust a cap. He mess around and shoot himself. If anything, <laughs> we told you about Josh Gordon. Steve, Stevie B, man, say it again, punk. No, no, seriously, say it again because I don't know where you are. <laughs> Unless you speak. <laughs> Josh Gordon uh, of the Cleveland Browns, as we mentioned, has been suspended for the full season of 2015. Um, interesting that his agent is Drew Rosenhaus. Uh, who was also the agent of Warren Sapp at one point in his career, <laughs> Terrell Owens. Uh, hey, sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a, a connection. It's Look. a connection. Uh, Warren Sapp, as we spoke about, um, arrested last week in Arizona for pro- soliciting prostitutes. Actually, it was two women. They got in a dispute about payment at the end. I thought that was supposed to be settled before. Warren, but maybe uh, I don't know anything about running women, but I thought you discussed that before you came over. Um, Sap has been released by the NFL Network. He's also been pulled from this uh, commercial, Bud Light had a commercial. This uh, is Alex. Warren. We saw him holding Bud Light, which means he he's up for joining some happens. guys for a call. So we surprised him with a new Buccaneers themed living room. Alex, come and check us out. Hey, man. Cool. You like it? Yeah. Alex, Alex. Wait. What the you're number one book fan. I, am. I love it. Come with me. Come on. That SAP <laughs> commercial with Bud Light, that has been pulled due to the prostitution charges. If I remember correctly, back in 2010, 2011, he had similar pro- prostitution charges somewhere as well. Um, um, I thought you paid him to go. I don't know what he paying him for. for. First of all, the Josh Gordon situation. I don't know why if this guy can't follow the drug policy during the season, they think he's going to take a year off and not get high. You know, what I'm, <laughs> it's going to happen. Maybe he should start looking. To he's coach. 24 years old. Yeah. Maybe he should start looking into coaching or something. And as far as Warren, Sa- Warren Sapp is concerned, there were two prostitutes. He got into them about payment. This s- smacks of, he took them to the room. The Viagra didn't kick in soon enough. <laughs> they were on a time limit on some, hey, man, you still got to pay us. And he was on some, no, I'm only going to pay if I finish. And they were like, well, we got to start first, dude. You know what I'm saying? We don't have an extra 35, 40 minutes to wait on you to get ready. And he was on some, we'll get out of my room. And they was on some, you're going to give me my money. And they were like, nah. And then, um, <laughs> he ended up losing his job. I guarantee you that's what uh, happened. Some of the NFL Network employees uh, said they were happy that he was gone, that uh, even at that job, he was a handful. As you know, he's always been an outspoken, um, loud, brash type Hall of Famer. That was how he played. That's how he works. I don't know how true those comments are of him working at NFL Network and the employees um, they said it was kind of a prima donna, like complaining when stuff wasn't right and wanting things to be his way off. Like I do around here. <laughs> the music's not right. That doesn't make me a prima donna. It just means that I don't want to be lost in the 80s for four Well, hours. I mean, it's probably not that that he's complaining about, though. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying if, if he's screaming about the music not being right and prostitutes, then <laughs> maybe that would make you a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, the Quail Jackson of the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, he was arrested 
last week for punching the pizza boy. Uh, <laughs> hey, Vic Kenny, I'm just reporting it, man. Don't don't give me that look. I didn't. <laughs> what kind of pizza was it? Listen, bro. no, that's that's Warren's mug shot. <laughs> and, and you <laughs> and you talking to a dude who, when it comes to being uh, a clown, man, the pizza was cold, man. No, I told I'm just you, saying, pizza, when when it comes to <laughs> being a clown, thirty minutes or less. When it comes to being a clown, I graduated summa cum laude, <laughs> clown college, and some of this stuff makes me go, really, dude, punch the pizza. What did the punch pizza boy do? Uh, they Over a parking spot. It wasn't even his for his pizza. I guess they were waiting for a spot, and the pizza man pulled into his spot. You know how you're waiting? Uh, no, I, pizza, I, 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 I understand parking. Him, no, it wasn't for him. Oh. <laughs> they were arguing over a parking spot. Right. Okay. Which well, means, yeah, yeah, yeah. which means, Dequoia, what's his name? Uh, I'm, I, I might be messing it up, Mama. Whoever he named him, Dequoia. Okay. Which means he's so petty he won't even D- uh, valet park. D Q W E L L. Dequoia. I mean, so he don't valet park. <laughs> I don't. Is, is that is that what I'm gonna understand? You so petty, you gonna fight a pizza dude over a parking space uh, when you play in the NFL, dude? We we couldn't just, you know, touche. But I fought someone over a parking spot before, so. Have you? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, we've gotten to that point. He, he stepped out of his car to fight me and everything. So he was in my spot. Did you step out of your car to, park, to fight yes, him? Yes, What do you, what do you mean? In your, was it a marked spot? Or it yes, was just people, in your mind you had decided, like no. like Bruce Jenner had decided that you, you wanted the parking spot? No, it was my parking spot. I It's inside of my garage. And people tend to, who aren't authorized to park in the garage, first off, but you don't have a sticker. Right. Park in your spot. And so I told this dude, get out of there. You don't even, you're not supposed to be in the garage. And he really stepped out of his car to fight me. And I stepped out too. I was like, okay. Uh, Did you have your hands clenched up and everything? No, nah, I just stepped out. I was trying to see what, what he was about to do. I was like, whatever you're about to do, I'm about to just call the cops and just win this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you wanted them people. I'm going to win one. I'm going to win this you one. You wanted them people. Huh? I will be that day. Well, she probably, she, oh, okay. she probably stepped out of the car. He stepped out of the car. And all of a sudden, another car pulled up like, hey, Valentina, you're having problems here. This guy. <laughs> who is this mug here? He's giving the problems over well, this parking spot. And then just like Bronx Tales. He was murdered on the spot. <laughs> just so, just so you know, the the threat of jail does not scare anyone. Scare. Right? Look at these criminals up in here. Man. These guys, they don't. They they ready to do eighteen months. Hey, well, he left it. Alone. And they already know how much time they're gonna do too. <laughs> but knocking you out of a parking spot, I'll be out before football season. <laughs> and the girl before my wings get cold, they'll have me out on the street. Uh, I, y'all got somebody online? I'm supposed to be getting to. They probably hung up. They probably they hung, hung up. up. It's a surprise. You said they hung up. No, no, we got. It. Oh, okay. Hey. Ain't nobody gonna hold the line that long, hey. but my mama. That mama on the line. Bunny Gandy. <laughs> Can you hear me? This, Put your hearing aid in. This is mama on the line. I know this. <laughs> I know. Y'all got my mom. You know she she ain't, she don't get going before noon. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me, mother? Yeah, I can hear you. See you too. Oh, what you what you yes, on? I can hear you. you must have done some that your coat on this morning. You can can you hear me? What's wrong with your yeah, phone? She got the she got the volume up in the back so she can hear herself talking hey, to you are- on the radio. Oh well, y'all something wrong with the connection. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, of course, so something's wrong with the little... connection. The mediocre producers running the show. Yeah, it's all, it's all. <laughs> of course, something is wrong with the connection. Why uh, would you think that anything would work today? Robert Kraft, you know, the owner of the Patriots. He, uh, since his wife passed away two years ago, he's taken up with a 26 year old lover, former model. I've uh, been hanging out with some strange characters. Uh, in this picture right here, you see. Uh, Robert Crabb hanging out with Ye. That's Kanye. You know, I ain't, you thought I ain't know how to speak y'all language. Ye on fleek. <laughs> Ye on fleek. <laughs> Did I get that right? Uh, I mean, I guess he on fleek. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Kanye, Jay-Z, 
Nas and somebody named Big Sean. I don't know who that is. I don't know why they let him in the picture. Is his wallet big enough to be oh, in God. this picture? Oh, God. Big Sean? Oh, Who's God. It? You don't know about He's Big like, uh, Sean? I don't mess with you. Oh, exactly. God. Oh. You don't know about oh, Big well, Sean? Guy, I know his wallet ain't big enough to be in this group of people <laughs> right here. He's yeah. just Sean Don. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> He, uh, uh, but I mean, but as Robert far as Travis. the new class of of money, he he's getting oh, a little okay. bit. Yeah. Well, but he's uh, Kanye's protege, basically. Right. Gotcha. His Kanye's do boy. Right. He and don't well, have he has his well, boys. what I'm saying is, uh, Jay Z spawned Kanye. Mm -hmm. Kanye spawned this big, dude, Big, big Sean. Sean. Okay. And Nas can body them all in a lyrical battle. <laughs> so he was, just, he was just stacking up the number of bodies that he... And you can always tell you tell when billionaires are relaxed, they pull their shirt out of their pants. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's his relaxed look right there. You know, <laughs> They probably uh, yeah. had him blowing some was... of that Girl Scout cookie and look at her. Because he... earlier when he was in the meeting with the other billionaires, you can see the wrinkles at the bottom. <laughs> right. It yeah. had been tucked in. But now I'm on my street hustle. Right. So... <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get out here, and this is my hard look. Right, right, right. <laughs> and if you don't think he's hard, there's a guy behind him that kind of looks like Kevin Costner, that will shoot you. Mm -mm. So for all you people that be thinking y'all just gonna run up on these people and there's nobody with them, wait, wait a minute, sports jock. Look are. at that group. You think guns bothers anybody <laughs> in this group? Seriously, yeah, Kanye. <laughs> he, he, ain't, ain't, he ain't about that life. Hey, Kanye from the South Side of Chicago. Don't uh -huh. let him fool you, bro. Everybody in the South Side wasn't hard. Well, I guess you're right. Guess <laughs> we'll be right. back for the sports show. That, that's how I ended up locked up. <laughs> with Wayne Gaddy coming up next. Atlanta Olive Oil Company is this week's Sports Jock of the Week sponsor. Located at 1133 Huff Road, Suite F, Atlanta, Georgia. Visit them this week for samples of the Sports Jock Oil of the Month, Black Walnut BV. Atlanta Olive Oil Company is more than just a place to buy gourmet-infused olive oils and balsamic vinegars. It's a unique gathering place for tastings and intimate settings. Located at 1133 Huff Road, Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta Olive Oil Company. Proud sponsor of the Sports Jock Show. Hey, hey Dad, Dad, how do you throw a curveball? How do you build a fort? How do refrigerators run? How do fish learn how to swim? Kids ask a lot of questions. How high can you jump? But you don't have to know every answer. How many phone numbers are there? Because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. How do cell phones work? There are thousands of children in foster care who don't need every question answered. What's electricity? They just need you. What's the moon made of? For more information on how you can adopt, go to adoptuskids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. NDC Family Care Incorporated's Dr. Jermaine Cummings of Loganville, Georgia, is now accepting new patients in the Loganville area. Introduce yourself to Dr. Cummings and her unique approach to health care today. Visit drjermainecummings.com. That's D-R-G-E-R-M-A-I-N-E Cummings.com. Or call 770-554-8828. That's 770-554-8828. Until you heard this ad on the Sports Jock Show. DrJermaineCummings.com. Your busy lifestyle demands performance. Energy drinks and shots can be an acquired taste and can cause jitter. Your busy lifestyle It's not always easy being a dad. When's the fairy princess coming? Maybe it now. What? What, what? what do you mean she's not coming? But, but it's, it's always, always worth it. It's fairy princess! It is I, Groove's Zinko Bell. Yeah. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. I know it's really you, girl. I'm just pretending for the other kids. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Players Lounge. You have been given full access to the Players Lounge on the Sports Jack Show with Wayne Gandy.
Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock Wayne Candy. I'm here with Selfie and Big Kenny. Uh, interesting story well, to some people. A lot of criticism for Coach Bill Belichick after the Super Bowl. His daughter was out on the field. He gave her a kiss. Uh, this is the kiss if you're watching the Sports Jock page. And a lot of people were trying to criticize him for kissing his daughter like that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I didn't feel, I mean, you're in a heightened moment like that. Passion sometimes spills over. Um, and some people kiss in the mouth. I've seen there's men who kiss their sons in the mouth still uh, because y'all are so disconnected and think you're never supposed to touch anything but a dog. I've seen you people out there kissing chihuahuas just like this letting them lick but this is nasty but fido sticking his tongue in between your lips <laughs> is good selfie you good with that <laughs> for some reason you good with that tongue in a dog i kissed my daughter after just winning a super bowl and now i'm supposed to be a gross man <laughs> all i'm saying all i'm saying that. really right. quick really quick go back to the picture Where, where's the mediocre producer okay <laughs> Go over and let's get the picture and then throw some Stevie Wonder music under that. And it looks uh, inappropriate. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> if, if you if you put it with the Stevie Wonder music, doesn't it look like uh, maybe they could be more than dad? And right. Dog? But the thing that always kills me with you people in this technology, if you stop anything and make it a steal, you make it look longer. You make it, you know, yeah. and all yeah. kinds of stuff. So... Something that happened in the snap of a finger, by right. you stopping it, you may look like it's, right. it's more in depth. It's just a heat of the moment. She just probably right. ran up. Boom, this boom, this boom, needs Barry down. White music. Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Well, a gentleman that we know knows a lot about Barry White. He went to the first Barry White concert. It's our <laughs> man for the AJC beat writer, Mr. D. Ledbetter. Good morning to you, D. Hey, good morning, Wayne. Uh, appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> D, real quick before we get on the Falcons, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire or Stevie Wonder? Uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, that's my man. See, that's why I called my man, D. I knew he was going to be with me today. But good morning to you. Falcons introduced their new coach last week, Dan Quinn. Um, Quinn has a lot of power with this organization now. Yeah, Wayne, we've seen uh, this trend uh, where the coach has been re receiving uh, authority over the final 53-man roster. And uh, I don't know if you – I guess if you got to get your coach, you have to give that up. But uh, he's never been a head coach anywhere, but uh, uh, they gave him the power anyway. And you can trace it back to when Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft had a fight over picking the groceries back uh, in that uh, – Super Bowl between the Packers and the, and the uh, Patriots and uh, Bill Bell and he left after that. Parcells left to go to the Jets because they gave him the power. And now these coaches are asking for this power uh, during the interviewing process, and teams are are giving it to him. Do you think that derives from the situation where Dan Quinn and Thomas Dimitrov are not necessarily bosom buddies? Well, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I think you try to get as many football minds together, and then, you know, if you can get them on the same page, it works. If it doesn't, uh, like it uh, in New York with uh, uh, Gene Isaac after two years, then you get rid of him now. We're seeing uh, quick hooks on these general managers like we uh, have come to see on a few coaches. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a corporate business model, you know, results-driven. If you don't win and – don't get it turned around quick in this modern day era of parity. Then uh, you're going to see uh, new folks get an opportunity at it. It's a uh, it's a new way of doing business in the NFL. But uh, some of these new billionaire owners are a lot less patient than the old traditional NFL owners. And speaking of the ownership, the Falcons came under scrutiny with um, allegations of pumping crowd noise into games. Uh, the investigation, from what I have been reading, is over, so they're waiting for the outcome of that. How serious of a problem does uh, Mr. Blank have with the NFL? 
Uh, I think it's a very serious problem. Uh, could cost them a draft pick and certainly a substantial fine, uh, you know, especially if it's determined by the league office that the, uh, the football operations department was blatantly and repeatedly uh, violating the sound rules in the, in the Georgia Dome, which is uh, the team is admitted to. And this, uh, Mr. Blake said he's been angered and embarrassed by the uh, fact-finding there. And we should see some, uh, uh, you know, movement in that football operations department uh, when that report comes out from the league. Hey, D, this is uh, Sophie Queen talking to you. How you doing? I'm doing great, Sophie Queen. <laughs> uh, my question for you is, you know, we got Dan Quinn now as our head coach, which was the defensive uh, coach for the Hawks. Hold on, who, who's we? We, who's we? I'm sorry. Well, the, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't know the he was Falcons. a Falcon fan. Okay, uh, but go ahead. Uh, so I'll, I'll be on the notes on yeah, Wednesday, you too, see, now. You see, uh, <laughs> you see how she did that? She tried to throw us at, like, we. We. Okay. we. No, I'm joking. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. So... My question to you is if if I know they want to I know they want to improve defense with this coach how can they make the the defense even comparable to the Seahawks? Well, they're going to have to do some risky yeah, prayers, <laughs> <laughs> some tackling, uh, but you know structurally they're going to have to um, uh, you know better teach and better coaching maybe too. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the things they're going to have to do is get rid of some players. Uh, bring in uh, better upgrades and then uh, uh, draft a little bit better at those key positions. I think they're okay in the secondary. I like, uh, you know, both of the young corners. Uh, William Moore went healthy. The Kamal Ishmael kid came along. And then the Southward kid and Dwight Lowry, uh, those were all serviceable and, you know, maybe even pretty good defensive backs who could – benefit from a pass rush or, or just a semblance of a, a pass rush. And uh, uh, the defensive ends that Coach Quinn likes are a little bit bigger in stature than the ones the Falcons have been stockpiling. So uh, they've got a bunch of 250-pound, 55-pound ends that uh, they're going to have to either bulk up to 20 pounds or, you know, get some bigger guys with the length and the size that Coach Quinn likes. So, uh, we'll see some roster churning, uh, Miss Sophie. Uh, when they uh, took over in Seattle, they ran through 284 transactions in the first year, so all in the name of competition. So uh, we'll, I'm sure he'll try to bring some of that competition and uh, perhaps some of that roster churn here to Atlanta. Okay. Uh, D, good morning. So the Falcons have admitted to pumping crowd noise into the stadium the Patriots have been under suspicion of deflate gate. Jerry Rice recently made some comments where he said he used stick them on his gloves, knowing that was illegal. Are all these cases highlighting some sort of lack of oversight and accountability at the executive level in the NFL? Well, I think um, as the, the uh, rules violations come to light, uh, and, and they're so... Uh, you know, obscure that the league will be able to deal with them going forward. Uh, you know, the stick em thing, you know, are you going to check everybody's hands before the game? I mean, there's some things that have to be done in the spirit of the game. And with the honor system, uh, you know, who's going to suspect that, that somebody or some, some individual is going to deflate the ball? I mean, that's something that's off the radar screen, but, you know, it's funny that 11 of their 12 were, were deflated and none of the coats. So, uh, you know, hopefully they can get to the bottom of that. And here in Atlanta, the, uh, the, the, the sound factory thing has been an issue for a while with these new domes, starting with uh, Minneapolis. There have been accusations there in Minneapolis. And in Indianapolis, they've had accusations, but now – the league has found a way to monitor the audio, and uh, that's how they caught the Falcons pumping in the crowd noise past the 22nd uh, mark on the play clock and when the team's in the huddle trying to call their signals, which are clear violations. So, uh, you know, they've, they've got a system in place for that now. I guess uh, as the crooks create the crime, uh, the league's got to come up with a way to police them, and uh, it's just a, a difficult task that, uh, some people want to push the envelope and take the, you know, the honest part part of the sport out of it. So we'll um, we'll see how they handle that as we move forward. 
Well, thank you, D, for calling in and helping us with the Falcon Report. Um, and, and as usual, we'll talk to you as the season uh, comes around. All right, Wayne. All I right. appreciate that. Thanks for having me. All right. D. Orlando Ladbetter, AJC, beat writer for the Falcons. Big Kenny, I must say, D um, actually took the words out of my mouth. I know one place, which was uh, Minnesota, that we used to sit on the bench like, man, they pumping sound in here. This It is not this loud. It's not these <laughs> right. many people. And this stuff is echoing. And Mike Vick back here with that baby voice. I cannot hear you. <laughs> right. So we got to go to a whole. Just don't. We'll just go no huddle. Um, right. he, and he, when he said it, it was like that was the team that we knew. And a lot of these things that you're saying, it, it sounds funny, but if you ain't cheating. Like we, they used to check us. Uh, when I first got in the league, we sprayed ourselves with silicone. Then they started checking us. So if you ever see offensive lineman, defensive lineman walk out the locker room, the ref, he has the right to check three or four of the people because I was trying to keep you from being able to grab me. Uh. So we would spray ourselves with silicone. <laughs> eh, you know, spray a little something on the glove. How, 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 you know, how does <laughs> piped in noise from Minnesota sound? Hey, throw the ball, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so some of these things are just... You get caught, but don't think the other 31 teams are not using as many tactics as they can to get by. We'll be back, 888-926-75. Steve, we're in too much love uh, for a blind man. 7562, we'll be back. More of the Sports Jock Show right after this. Go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandhi is coming up next. Visit Nally Ford Chevy Springs on Roswell Road and tell them you heard this ad on the Sports Jock Show for the best deals on the all-new 2015 Fords. Like the 15 Ford Expedition Platinum, Focus Titanium, and save even more on the 2014 Edge SE. Nally Ford Sandy Springs, 7555 Roswell Road. Or visit NallyFord.com. Be sure to tell them you heard about it on the Sports Jock Show. That's NallyFord.com. Hey, Dad, how do you throw a curveball? How do you build a fort? How do refrigerators run? How do fish learn how to swim? Kids ask a lot of questions. How high can you jump? But you don't have to know every answer. How many phone numbers are there? Because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. How do cell phones work? There are thousands of children in foster care who don't need every question answered. What's electricity? They just need you. What's the moon made of? For more information on how you can adopt, go to adoptuskids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. This Sports Shock Health, Health update, update brought to you by JNA Naturals. Naturals. There's, There's a lot, lot of truth behind the words, you are what you eat. JNA Naturals, Naturals promotes the benefits of vegan and raw foods diet. diet. Many, many are unaware that the standard American diet is one of the top leading causes of many chronic illnesses and cancers today. Much of the foods many Americans eat are saturated with fats, sugars, and toxic chemicals and preservatives that are detrimental to our health. Only the purest ingredients create holistic remedies for body, mind, and soul. Visit janaturals.com. Your busy lifestyle demands performance. Energy drinks and shots can be an acquired taste and can cause jitters, crashes, and even stomach discomfort. The new 8-Hour Energy Patch is the natural, sugar, and calorie-free alternative to energy drinks, shots, and even coffee. It's the only energy that sticks. Just two time-release patches will keep you going at work, the gym, or even a night out. No unpleasant taste, jitters, or crashes. For a 12-hour boost, just add another patch. For only four hours, use one. You're in charge. Visit 8hourenergy.com for more info and your free sample. Do not exceed three patches per day. In D.C. Family Care Incorporated's Dr. Jermaine Cummings of Loganville, Georgia is now accepting new patients in the Loganville area. Introduce yourself to Dr. Cummings and her unique approach to health care today. Visit drjermainecummings.com. That's D-R-G-E-R-M-A-I-N-E Cummings.com or call 770-554-8828. That's 770-554-8828. And tell her you heard this ad on the Sports Talk Show. DrJermaineCummings.com. This segment of the show is brought to you by Dentistry of Norcross. Ever wonder? Enough is enough! I have had it! I'm so serious. 
suck. And we hold the world ransom for... And we hold the world ransom for Wayne Use me while I whip this out. Show me. Broadcasting live from the Armada FM studios in Atlanta, Georgia. This, this is the Sports Chalk Show with Wayne Gandy. You may fill me up, fill me up, yeah. Can you fill me up, yeah? You won't break me down. I've come so far, come so far, yeah. Yeah, I've come so far, yeah. To just throw. Welcome back to the Sports Talk Show. I'm the Sports Talk Wayne Candy. Thank you, D. Orlando Ledbetter, for calling in, uh, helping us report on the Falcons. As you know, last week, Dan Quinn, new head coach of the Falcons. A couple of other notes uh, real quickly. Running back Joseph Rando. You might remember him from stealing uh, some underwear and cologne from the Dillers down in Dallas. He was arrested. Uh, on uh, domestic violence call. Uh, I think he was released without incident. The young lady was trying to get a restraining order. Something about paying to have a divorce. It's just, uh, I keep telling you guys, first of all, never go back to your hometown and sleep with anybody. You get a piece of advice like that. When you make it big, leave them people where they at. Even when they try to give it to you, leave them there. Those days are over. Move on to greener pastures. Uh, D. Lyman Latroy Gowen was arrested Tuesday night down in Stark, Florida, part of Florida I've never even heard of. Um, 357 grams of pot, $190,000 of cash, a 9 millimeter gun in his car. The police officer said he was very uncooperative and hostile while they were checking his vehicle. He was released on a hundred thousand dollar bond. Um, that's a lot of cash to be having. Where are you going with $190,000 worth of cash? Huh? I don't know. He, you know, but uh, 357 grams. How much is that? Is that over the legal limit to have? <laughs> yes. Is that... <laughs> Well, last time I said it, and y'all said it couldn't have been that much, but that's over 10 ounces. Uh, yeah, I told you I got some resident weed heads. Some of these people have been doing marijuana since they was 12. Vic Kenny and Selfie are in that group. Uh, what else is going on? Malcolm Butler. It's great to be Malcolm Butler everywhere. He was last night, him and Julian Edelman. They were at the Grammys. Do we have that picture of them? Um the video, Let, let's show the video right now before we get around to the birthdays. They're up on stage with Josh Dumel. That is Julian Edelman in the middle. Malcolm and the Grammy goes to... Once again, another interception by Malcolm. Uh, that was the little skit that all CBS could come up with. Uh, Mark, <laughs> Malcolm Butler, as for you that don't know, it's the gentleman who intercepted the ball at the end to win and seal the deal for the Super Bowl for the Patriots. Uh, the Patriots won the Super Bowl. These two gentlemen basically were the offense and defensive heroes of the game. Edelman caught, caught the go-ahead touchdown, and Butler intercepted the ball that would have gave and seal the deal for the Seahawks. They have been to Disney World, as I said. They're at the Grammys, taking awards. Uh, just good to be Malcolm Butler, undrafted, free agent, living the life for right now. Tom Brady is trying to get Chevy to give Malcolm the truck. I think we discussed that last week. What would Tom do with the truck? He's trying to get them to give it to him. Uh, so... It, it would work that Malcolm would pay the taxes or some kind of way uh, on the truck. But nice of you, Tom, to think of somebody. I know you didn't want to add that to your fleet. 
if you remember, this is his third MVP, which means that he has had three pickup trucks. Uh, and I'm quite sure in the New England area, he already had a pickup truck uh, at that point. But to give something to an undrafted, which means that most likely uh, Malcolm Butler worked this year for league minimum, which was probably about 250 this year. Um, so something like a truck like that for him is a big deal, probably an upgrade from whatever he was pushing. Uh, all, <laughs> already, um, Lady T has stepped into the building, and, and you know when people know you. Sometimes, you know, I, I do want to, like, get one of those old bull ropes and choke Lady T, but uh, then she walks in with cami cakes, and it's like, you know what, Lady T know me. Because these these other people came in here with a box Publix cake and, you know, sports jock taste buds. You know, I don't really do Publix cake, you know. I love the little drawings on top of it. But we have some cami cakes here. Selfie, I will not be offering you any. Uh, this is a men-only box. And I won't be giving the mediocre producer because sometimes he's not a man. Uh, he, he's a woman over there on the ones and twos. Uh, he hasn't turned me on all day. I look at him right there, but he is clean today. You know he clean because everything is matching. Look at him, trying to act all serious. Who we got next? Another surprise caller? Yes, Carlos Simmons. Oh, okay. Um, are you singing happy birthday now? Are you taking the caller? We're, we're all. You got me all over the place right now, man. Who am I talking to? Lose. Hey, what's up? It's Carlos. Morning to you, man. Good morning, man. Happy 30th for the... I don't know how many <laughs> It's 32. I I'm okay with getting a little older. I'm 32 for the 10th time. But uh, I appreciate it. I know that... How y'all got Carlos up before 1 p.m.? <laughs> this man here really is a vampire. He, he only operates at night. But, Los, what's going on? Hey, not too much of that runs, man. <laughs> Carlos Emmons, a former teammate of mine, owns Wet Willies here in Atlanta. If you're ever up on Piedmont, uh, which I know some of you are, he does have good weed in the back, too. So order it with the lemon pepper wings. You get an ounce. No, see, Los, Los. <laughs> <Were> you crazy? <laughs> but thank you, Los, man. I appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Enjoy it. All right, man. Carlos Emmons. Uh, Carlos played, I want to say, 11 years? In the NFL, 10, 11? Yeah. With 11. the 11, yeah, see? Oh, he's still online. Yeah, see? Yeah. Testing my memory. See, when you have uh, CTE, you always want to answer the question yourself. So it's like, <laughs> when y'all be thinking, what is he, why does he always do that? Because it's like, okay, let me see if my memory still works. Uh, but Carlos, good friend of mine, as I said, owns Wet Willies up on P. Munt. Uh, the sports jock is not a drinker. Um, so, but please go buy and drink enough for the both of us. How about that? Selfie, you ever been there? Okay. Well, let's bring uh, the co-host back to the show. Uh, they uh, are waiting. Big Kenny, uh, do you want a candy cake? Uh, yes, I do. Oh. Uh, <laughs> a shout out to uh, Sonia Harrison, who is the uh, publicist for Cami Cakes and the whole Cami Cake staff. Uh, I am on their uh, preferred guest list. We we are very yeah, close. Okay. Yeah, we, we are very close. And I used to host a uh, karaoke night over there at Wet Willie's, and it was hilarious that <laughs> these people would come up like, hey, uh, Big Kenny, make sure I get on the list. I need to get on the list, and I'm thinking somebody's trying to get discovered. <laughs> <laughs> and they would be horrible, and I would be like, you bugged me for an hour just to do that? <laughs> it, it was ridiculous. Uh, well, just tell Cammy Cake, you know, they could cut a little overhead by cutting some of this frosting. <laughs> you you want straight cake. Well, no, I mean, uh, it's enough frosting on one for all six. We'll, we'll see. Uh, the part of it is the uh, the frosting is a treat in itself. Like the cake is the moist, delicious right. confection that cakes are, and it's got a flavor. Uh, and then there's the frosting, which is a whole added flavor. So you might get like a banana cream raspberry, the raspberry. Well, I'm going to just get too deep into it. To talk <laughs> about it. I'm going to just get far too deep because uh, uh, I'm about st I'm getting uh, what's his, uh, the Zimmerman guy, the Andrew Zimmerman who, who travels. 
Oh, th- th- <laughs> this is very delicious. <laughs> it's got a smooth uh, aftertaste. Bizarre foods, is that bizarre, the guy? bizarre yeah. foods? Right. Yeah. Uh, Love that show. Real quickly before we go to break, uh, other birthdays from last week: Julio Jones of the Falcons, twenty-six. Julio. Uh, Vladi Divac. Laker fans, 47. Andre Ellington, 26. Bob Greasy, 70. Fran Tarkington, the first Michael Vick, 75. John Fox, 60. Alonzo Mourning, 45. Uh, so, one of the Splash Brothers, Clay Thompson, 25. Uh, Michael Jordan, B. Jordan, 27. Ashton Kusher, 37. Kimbo Slice. What happened to Kimbo Slice? Knocked out. <laughs> well, he, he got knocked out somewhere. <laughs> In Southside Chicago, <laughs> 41 years old, Matthew Stafford, 27, uh, Juwan Howard. Wow. Which college team did Juwan go play for? My mind's not on that right now. Really? Uh, you call Juwan yourself Howard. a sports fan? Uh, what? Well, 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 right he he was with Michigan, one. right? Michigan, Michigan, what were they yeah, called? The, I didn't uh, know that. They, they you don't were, know what they were called? Um, it was, oh, you asked me what they were called? Mm-hmm. Michigan? Yes, when Jawan was there. It's about the super squad that they had at the time frame. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the super squad, though. Yeah, it was, call something else. I don't, I, that was my... Well, do a little research. I'm not going to give her the research. answer. She... I know a team you're talking about, but... Uh, Lawrence Taylor, 56. <laughs> Oscar De La Hoya, 42. Bobby Brown, 46. Henry Hank Aaron, 81. Cameron. Uh Jameer Nelson, 33. Isaiah Thomas, and not Zeke, but the one that plays for the Kings, 26. James Spader, 55. Chris Rock, 50. Uh, Chris Humphreys, who they gave a bunch of flack the other night, calling him Miss Kardashian, 30 years old. And Tom Brokaw, 75 years old. Uh, y'all are supposed to be singing me happy birthday as we go into the break. Is, and I would is, like the... Is that what he told us to do? I would like the... Um, <laughs> But we'll sing that when we come back from break. I don't I don't know where these people keep coming up with all this. <laughs> Maybe y'all should have just rent, wrote me a show out so I would know. <laughs> we'll be back after this. More of the Sports Jock Show. <laughs> oh, and, and now he's going to go do the music. <laughs> <laughs> don't go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy is coming up next. NDC Family Care Incorporated's Dr. Jermaine Cummings of Loganville, Georgia is now accepting new patients in the Loganville area. Introduce yourself to Dr. Cummings and her unique approach to health care today. Visit drjermainecummings.com. That's D-R-G-E-R-M-A-I-N-E Cummings.com. Or call 770-554-8828. That's 770-554-8828. And tell her you heard this ad on the Sports Jock Show. drjermainecummings.com. This week's episode, Rattlesnake at the Pond. Oh, Johnny, skipping rocks at the pond sure is fun. Hey, look, a moving stick. That ain't a stick. That's a rattlesnake. Sassy, we're in danger. Good idea, Sassy. Go get Mr. Gunderson. You will in a second, but first you'd like to tell us something we may not know about animal shelters in the United States? It's getting close, Sassy! <laughs> Approximately 8 million pets enter shelters each year? The majority of which are in shelters because of owner-related issues that the animals have no control over? Sassy, the rattlesnake! Save us, Sassy! <laughs> what, Sassy? You wish you were videotaping this? Sassy! Sassy is brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Remember, adopt. And now, back to the sports jar, Wayne Gandy.
<laughs> Welcome back to the Sports Shock Show. I'm the Sports Shock Wayne Gandy. Um, Carlos Emmons, thank you for calling in. Ryan McNeil, thank you. Mama Gandy, thank you. Could you send me my mail, please, since I know you're listening? Um. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Nick Cannon, Damian Lillard, uh, commercial. Who caught my attention Dang. last week? Uh, Damian Lillard of the Portland Trailblazers has been added in the place of Blake Griffith to the All Star Game. All Star festivities is this coming weekend in New York. It is hosted by both teams, the Brooklyn Nets and the New York Knicks, uh, at their record together, and it doesn't equal to the Hawks, but uh, it, it'll come to you later. Uh, 2016. 20 <laughs> 2016. Oh, man. Um, the Knicks owner even sent a fan uh, a, a rude message telling him, uh, if you don't like our product, go root for the Nets. Um, wow. And his email returned. So you'd be thinking those owners aren't reading your emails. I guess they really <laughs> are. The Hawks are trying to get Ray Allen. Um, both Hawks and the Cavs are in the hunt for maybe Ray coming after the All-Star game to uh, join their teams. Blake Griffith will be out a couple of weeks with staff infection. Um, <laughs> do not, uh, I was just about to say, do not laugh at staff infections because there has been, especially in the NFL, a couple of guys over the last four or five years who never returned. Hey, that was a that was a typo. It it was a Steph infection. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some girl named Stephanie gave him an infection. That's what it was. He trying to blame it on the hospital. Uh, oh man, Jock Vaughn, uh, former head coach now of the Orlando Magic. Jock, don't be upset, man. You can't win if you don't have no talent. I mean, I don't know who y'all thought Jock was supposed to turn into. Uh, Phil Jackson. Couldn't get this team to play any better. They don't really have that kind of talent base with the Magic. They can give you a good, hard game, but it's, it's not going to be uh, a winning team. But as usual, when you're losing, somebody has to take the blame. Uh, but this Nick Cannon commercial with Damian Lillard for Foot Locker, uh, I just like how he was telling everybody, every team, Big Kenny Selfie has a... Have you seen this commercial? Yeah. I actually uh, a superstar, but let, let's play the commercial. What's up, man? Congrats, man. Your first Adidas signature shoe. It's coming out during February at Foot Locker with all the freshest gear. You know what else is fresh? I'm considering being your team's signature celebrity. Or what? You know how most teams have a certain celeb that sits in the front row and stuff? Yeah. Nick Cannon could be that guy. I don't, I don't know. Damien. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> and for you that did not see the commercial, uh, Damian Lillard basically was offered a selection of uh, used to be big names um, Bobby Brown, Humpty Hump. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, Joey Patone. Uh, Joey Patone from NSYNC, right? And uh, Ian, what was the dude from 90210? That was the last guy. Um, Ian, I don't know his last look name. Look up nine one two zero. That that show nine zero two one zero. That I think yeah, that was his last name. The last the guy from and the, the last Ian. guy that they show in the commercial when he turns around. That um, he's from nine zero two one zero back in the day. Z Zerig Zerig Zerig. Yes. Zierig. So basically, um, Damien decides that Nick. If that's all I got to choose from, right. okay, Nick, you can be our team <laughs> superstar. Uh, and I just thought it was a well-done commercial because I was uh, – the people they picked, because when did you decide to go get Humpty Hump? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you think his agent was like, look, uh, Humpty's interesting in, in that commercial offer that you extended to him. But he was wondering – he had a few questions about uh, the contract. Even Shock G was uh, surprised. Shock right, G right. Was actually is actually Humpty Hump for you people that don't know hip hop. Uh, he just, <laughs> his alter ego, like I'm saying, what Rihanna's is. Let's see ya. Right. So Shock G was the rapper. Right. His alter ego was Humpty, Humpty Hump. Humpty Hump. <laughs> so I'm quite sure when he picked up that phone, y'all want me to do what? Oh man, we what kind of check y'all paying? Right. And went on down there, but uh, Shock G, cute commercial, I thought. 
Um, Damian Lillard has been added to the All-Star game, as I said, in the place of Blake Griffith. Um, I think a lot of people will continue to complain about the selection of this because it's an open selection. Basically, it, it doesn't have, it used to be more position. Every two people per position. Now it's whoever the top 12 people to get voted in gets to go. Right. Um, so now uh, Damian Lillard is added to the team. And I think DeMarcus Cousins is stepping in for someone else that got hurt. Maybe Kobe, Kobe something yeah. like that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, the Lakers lost to the Cavs yesterday as well. Um, do y'all hear that sound? Is that the rain from outside? Oh, we have a call on the line? No? Excuse me? There's a Skype caller? Okay. Um, y'all are really like throwing my whole show vibe off right now. <laughs> with this weird... <laughs> This weird thing is going on. Like, I have been here a long time, and hopefully I'll be here longer. And if you know the sports jock, I'm not even a birthday kind of guy. Why? Because I have to buy my own gifts and sponsor my own party. So you do that enough, you know what you stop doing? You stop having birthdays. You do it long enough, you stop even having it. Hey, 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 sports you Just jock. like let it ride. <laughs> don't let I can save me some money. Don't let your paying for your own party deprive us of a good time. <laughs> How selfish can you be on your birthday thinking about you? <laughs> What, what, what kind of person thinks about themselves as much as you do on your birthday? And then you tripping because you got to pay for all the champagne and strippers. What's up with that? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. Where's the love for us? You're doing enough. You'd be like, you know what? Hey. I can. Well, 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 I tell you what, Sports Jock, we don't want to stress you. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to play 15 years in the NFL, okay? That's okay, what the rest of that. us going to do. And then next year we're going to come back and we're going to give all of us a party uh, <laughs> and we're going to pay for it ourselves. Okay, but we have a Skype call on the line. Let's sing happy birthday. Who, Who is on Skype? Do y'all have uh, Anita Baker? Oh. Oh, man. Y'all got... Uh, Christopher Williams. <laughs> Christopher Williams is on the, is on the bike. Christopher. I ne I knew. Never liked you, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Christopher, give us a little bit. Don't wait me. <laughs> Good morning to you. Good morning. What's going on? Oh, man. <laughs> hey, yo, let me tell you, Sports Shop, what's up, man? Yo, I, um, I met Mean Joe Green on Saturday. Okay. And he told me to tell you happy birthday, and he told me to say that um, you all were great teammates back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, we not. <laughs> but that's not my business, though. No, G <laughs> not the team. For some people, they like, man, you playing with me, Joe? You gonna get that question? No, I did not play <laughs> with me, Joe, because I, I get that all the time. Hey, did you block for Bo? No, man, I, Bo is like old enough to be my dad almost. Uh, but uh, good morning to you, guy. Good morning, man. How you doing? Uh, you know, I like the look. You look like a. Uh, Jam Master J for your birthday. You got the Adidas rocking. Hey, they, you know, you just need a fedora. They oh. never, they never found my murderer though, man. I'm, I'm, still, <laughs> I'm still in purgatory. I can't move on. That's why he's <laughs> doing this show. <laughs> big, big K, Big K, look like you uh, about to do a hit. Uh, you, uh, hey, you, you, the radio? you, you sound like a witness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's going on with you there? Hey man, how's it, how's it going in Dallas? It's going, man. You know, uh, trying to keep uh, trying to keep players uh, away from their ex girlfriends and weed, and you know, smashing car windows and stuff like that. Mr. Randall stealing underwear and and uh, cologne. Joseph Randall, but uh, hey, uh, that's good for Demarco Murray, I guess. Maybe they'll keep him under contract next year. Well, my my first question really is: Are you at home or are you at her house? <laughs> <laughs> I am Cause, at home. No, because if you're at home, you painted the walls. Because last time we called you at home, the walls were white. Right, right, so, right. It's so, and it's just lighting. <laughs> now, see, Sports Jock, you just, you just clued girlfriend number two into something she never noticed before. She was thinking like, wait, that isn't the color of the walls of his house. And now he's got to explain that later. <laughs> oh, man. Well, <laughs> what are y'all going to do before I let you go with Julius Randle? 
That's a good question. I think they're just gonna have to cut him. I mean, come on, man. It, you know, I, I think I first the first arrest with the underwear in Cologne. I think that was a a hookup going bad. Somebody said, just just take it. Right. Just take it. <laughs> just take these bananas. <laughs> kind of like and, and then yeah. saw them. This time, I don't know how you could explain that. Right. Right. Well, hopefully, uh, he doesn't end up on that road because you know. Domestic violence is is not tolerated. Even Prince talked against it last night during the Grammys, you know. And that used to be one of his go-to moves. (laughs) 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 You saw Purple Rain. Don't make it look like it was just me. That was his go-to move back in the day. (laughs) Well, thank you, guy, for calling in, man. And and, uh, hold hold a a Skype. We're going to get your credit card number. Uh, So I can get get me another... uh, I, I mean, buy me a fedora, as you said. <laughs> I don't own one of those. So, guy, we'll talk to you later. Yeah, bro. All right. I don't want you anywhere near Morris. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Some people are like, did Prince hit somebody? <laughs> 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 knocked, knocked hot fire Cheetos out of my office. He still did. Bam! <laughs> We'll be back more to Sports Jock Show, 888-926-7562. Don't go away. More of the Sports Jock Show with Wayne Gandy is coming up next. NDC Family Care Incorporated's Dr. Jermaine Cummings of Loganville, Georgia is now accepting new patients in the Loganville area. Introduce yourself to Dr. Cummings and her unique approach to health care today. Visit drjermainecummings.com. That's D-R-G-E-R-M-A-I-N-E Cummings.com. Or call 770-554-8828. That's 770-554-8828. And tell her you heard this ad on the Sports Jock Show. drjermainecummings.com. Your busy lifestyle demands performance. Energy drinks and shots can be an acquired taste and can cause jitters, crashes, and even stomach discomfort. The new 8-Hour Energy Patch is the natural, sugar, and calorie-free alternative to energy drinks, shots, and even coffee. It's the only energy that sticks. Just two time-release patches will keep you going at work, the gym, or even a night out. No unpleasant taste, jitters, or crashes. For a 12-hour boost, just add another patch. For only four hours, use one. You're in charge. Visit 8HourEnergy.com for more info and your free sample. Do not exceed three patches per day. Visit Nally Port Sandy Springs on Roswell Road and tell them you heard this ad on the Sports Junk Show for the best deals on the all-new 2015 Fords. Like the 15 Ford Expedition Platinum, Focus Titanium, and save even more on the 2014 Edge SE. Nally Ford Sandy Springs, 7555 Roswell Road. Or visit NallyFord.com. Be sure to tell them you heard about it on the Sports Junk Show. That's NallyFord.com. Hey, Dad, how do you throw a curveball? How do you build a fort? How do refrigerators run? How do fish learn how to swim? Kids ask a lot of questions. How high can you jump? But you don't have to know every answer. How many phone numbers are there? Because you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. How do cell phones work? There are thousands of children in foster care who don't need every question answered. What's electricity? They just need you. What's the moon made of? For more information on how you can adopt, go to AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. This Sports Shock Health Update brought to you by JNA Naturals. There's a lot of truth behind the words, you are what you eat. JNA Naturals promotes the benefits of vegan and raw foods diet. Many are unaware that the standard American diet is one of the top leading causes of many chronic illnesses and cancers today. Much of the foods many Americans eat are saturated with fats, sugars, and toxic chemicals and preservatives that are detrimental to our health. Only the purest ingredients create holistic remedies for body, mind, and soul. Visit JANaturals.com. And now, 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 back to the sports job. Wayne Gant. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock Wayne Gandy. Uh, selfie, send an email right now over to the mediocre producer and tell him it's called a music battle, which means that 
you play one person, then you play the other person. <laughs> you don't continually play the same person to the point that you forgot who the other person was in the battle. <laughs> but he keeps playing. He's played four Stevie Wonder songs in a row. And, no, no. and we haven't heard Earth, Wind & Fire since uh, we talked to Mary Kay. An hour and a half ago, and and he keep, <laughs> he, he he keeps grinning like I'm a fire off an email. It's gonna and, be mean, so lengthy. <laughs> it's called a battle. It means, you don't. <laughs> oh Steve man, it, it, it's guy. called it, one by it, default. It, it's called a battle, kind of like you'll be doing with the producer that's filling out a resume right now. <laughs> To take your spot. Oh, last week the Ravens let go uh, Terrence Cody, who was cut. Uh, they cut him Monday. Uh, he was indicted on animal cruelty charges. <laughs> wow. Um, the next day, um, they say I, that. I'm not laughing at being <laughs> cruel to animals. He, he had uh, his dog. Um, there was some foul play maybe in how the, the, the death of his dog. I guess maybe he didn't meet the requirements how you kill your dog in baltimore maryland i, I don't know but uh oh. he has two counts of aggravate aggravated animal cruelty 10 counts of animal cruelty wow and one count of marijuana possession oh, uh didn't he on. have an, had to, they had to get him on he, that, he huh? had, an alligator, had an alligator too and yeah, one alligator yeah yeah, yeah. so i don't know so, i didn't know it was illegal to own an alligator but um <laughs> Terrence Cody, <laughs> the big nose tackle out of Alabama. Uh, hey, hey, it, we don't have to. We don't have to get so personal and insult the size of his nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long is he going to jail for that? Then? Oh, he hasn't been. Uh, they've just arrested him. Oh. He's out on bail. Wow. Um, but they're saying, I guess maybe they figured, his, maybe he wasn't. He, you can't kill your dog. I don't know. I is there rules how you kill your dog? I guess in some states. Oh, the maybe. slow walk. The slow walk is out of. <laughs> you got me in Texas for that now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I have to go pay the vet to kill your dog now. I guess so. It's I didn't know that either. It's called pure capitalism, isn't it? I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Because I thought he he just like had neglected the dog or something. Because this was a mastiff. I think it was an eight thousand dollar dog, something like that. I don't think you would, you would neglect the eight thousand. Well, yeah, it was you it was a really it. it was a really <laughs> expensive dog. When you try to put yeah. it on eBay, I mean, if I spend eight grand for it, but I mean, if, if if you got a I'm gonna I, breed it or something, if you got an alligator, you probably look at a dog like whatever. You know? Yeah, <laughs> well, maybe he fed it, maybe he fed it to the alligator. <laughs> maybe probably maybe that's did. What it is. Maybe okay. So, uh, <laughs> Terrence Cody. Uh, you're going to have a long fight with the law. Uh, rapper Suge Knight, uh, for you that don't know, as I was telling Selfie before the show, uh, Suge Knight did play football for the University of Las Vegas, UNLV. He even played one year back, I think, I want to say 88. See, I'm doing that thing again when I'm testing my memory. <laughs> uh, 88, 89, um, where he played for the L.A. Rams for a year. Um, but that's Suge Knight, uh, charged with murder. Allegedly tried to run down two men um, on the set. Uh, there's a movie coming out um, straight out of Compton, the movie. And he tried uh, to run somebody over. Well, I, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, uh, I don't think allegedly goes with murder. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I think... <laughs> I think that the alleged part is if it was intentional. He got into, this is my problem with this sports job. <laughs> Suge Knight's 48 years old. The guy he got into a scrap with was like 52. They get into a fist fight. Right. And <laughs> Suge Knight speeds away from the scene and runs over two people killing one of them. What, what is a 48-year-old dude even fist fighting a 52-year-old dude? <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all beefing about well, that that's critical, that, that is that critical? Yeah, the gentlemen were 55 and 51. Oh, that's yeah. even oh. better. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 55-year-old the did die. Um, I'm just trying to keep my job like, you know, Brian Williams. I'm, I'm just doing allegedly, you know. So if he had said he allegedly saw a body in Katrina, he still right. be on the he, news he, tonight. He, he still be right, right. <laughs> but he said he did. See he, a body. He, he was making definitive claims. Yeah, I saw the body. We smoked a little weed together and everything. So I'm gonna say uh, allegedly, wow. um, but Suge Knight once again is in trouble, and I'm, I'm quite sure he's 
Shouldn't, shouldn't he be on like the three, <laughs> like three strikes out there now? It's over now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It'll be a wrap for him <laughs> yeah. if this is proven to be true. Um, they don't play on that third one out there. He get to go prove he is really a G, um, incarcerated. But um, I want to show this Kim K West. I wanted you. I don't know if y'all saw this during the Super Bowl. This the, 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 it was funny because I've never heard anybody being referred to as famous person. <laughs> um, but let's see this commercial real quickly. Kim, each month millions of gigs of unused data are taken back by wireless companies. Tragic. Data you paid for that can be used to see my makeup, my backhand, my outfits, my vacations, and my outfits. Sadly, all lost. Please help save the data. She's doing a commercial for Data Stash, and um, it shows her, and under it says Kim Kardashian West, and it says famous person. Uh, and she Clean. is basically doing a commercial to tell you not lose all your free data because you can take a picture of her butt in different outfits. Because we care. Like, um, what? <laughs> Vic Kenny, please put this in for proper perspective for me because I, I was lost for words when I saw it. So I didn't I didn't. <laughs> um, I don't try to address things that I don't understand. I, I try to pass it on. Uh, pe right. people are sheep <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. She's become popular. So now people are using her to uh, sell things. And I guess this is part of that process. Right. Wow. There is, and, and there are some people that would look at her in that commercial and go, wow, I'm switching to team. And this first aired during the Super Bowl, you yeah. know, Super Bowl yeah. commercial. So yeah. we're talking about. Uh, what, they, what was it? Four million? Four yeah, million? yeah. And, and this is one of the yeah. commercials that uh, they had me comment on when I did the Super Bowl commercial commentary. So it was looked at as one of the top Super Bowl commercials. Mm -hmm. $4.1 million, I think, for 30 seconds. Oh, was it 30 seconds? Okay. Of, so, of advertising. Okay. And this is what they decided to blow that money on. That's crazy. Yes. Uh, I just thought maybe it's your generation. Y'all are the fans of Kim K. Yeah, I mean, I get the part about her clothes. I mean, they could at least just put comma, I don't know, fashionista or something. Because she said clothes twice, didn't she? She said my yeah, clothes. Yeah, and my outfits. But yeah, that was her but, being I mean, funny. But the point is, is, I mean, come on. She didn't really talk about anything either. Like, you yeah. could take selfies of me in, in the snow. And that's, I, I think I that's the whole me. point is she's kind of irrelevant it's useless you know what i mean there, know there's no, about right like, there's no real point to her so basically the both of you come to the same conclusion i didn't have really words no there's yeah, no really no, no, like, don't know what, 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 you just watch it like I should be you don't know what doing. you're sitting there like what the hell is going on that, that's basically <laughs> yeah. what you're doing <laughs> exactly we do have a call jared's on the line no uh, we got two calls on jared and then, uh, so jared's not on the line he is on the line Mine too. jared Yes. Why would I be saying his name if I won a second? <laughs> Jared. Yes. Good Happy month. birthday, man. Happy, Happy birthday. I appreciate it, man. Give me that. Uh, what? What's that uh, expiration date on that card? Expiration uh, two seventeen. Two seventeen. And what's the uh, identification number on the front? It's a four, four digit code on the back. It, you know, back is uh, Mastercard Visa. Front is the Amex. Uh, you tried <laughs> to put it out there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> to, that's, I don't try to low blow me because I got an MX. I like to pay every 30 days. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big, uh, I like my credit to stay clean. So you don't get no gifts for real, man? No. You don't get you anything? Oh, I got some uh, five hour energy. I got three sticks of. Uh, Three sticks of Slim Jim. Some five hour energy. Could we show that on camera, please? <laughs> it, it looks about. Uh, <laughs> Enough five-hour energy to stay up to maybe, what, 2017? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I like to get hyped before the show. I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you sending me something? You need my address? Uh, yeah, I got your address. You know, little birdie told me. Oh, okay. All right, then. Well, I'll be expecting something tomorrow. FedEx. It. <laughs> size 22 shoe, right? Something like that? No, no, 14. Size 14. 14. Yes. Okay. All right. Go buy a... Uh, uh, 
flight school and uh, pick me up something in there, something vintage. Something vintage. What's your, what, what, what color? One of your old team colors or your current? Or your old? Or your no, I need. A, I need a red new, and black. I need a new pair of the uh, the red black uh, patent leather Air Jordan Elevens. They're going. Send me a pair of those. I haven't been able to get my hands on a new pair. They're right in your budget, three seventy five, four hundred. Yeah. Just send them on down. Yeah. <laughs> you see how he laughs at that? <laughs> like you want a real gift. <laughs> <laughs> he, he 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 was checking his balance when you was asking for it, and that's why he got quiet. He was like, "Whoa, I don't know about that." <laughs> but thank you for calling in, Jerry. Yeah, man. Enjoy your day. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. We're gonna go to break. When we come back, we're gonna wrap this. Uh, uh, up and down, crazy, wild day uh, that I didn't have planned in my book at all. Um, I think next year y'all should just give me the sheet. And uh, for, for that to happen, you'd have to get here on time. It's too soon for that. Too, too early for that, too. It's too soon for that. <laughs> <Look at him. laughs> we'll be back with more of the Sports he, Talk he, Show. He's writing an email now. Right, <laughs> right after this. <laughs> Go away. More of the Sports Jot Show with Wayne Gandy is coming up next. Visit Nally Ford Sandy Springs on Roswell Road and tell them you heard this ad on the Sports Jock Show for the best deals on the all-new 2015 Fords. Like the 15 Ford Expedition Platinum, Focus Titanium, and save even more on the 2014 Edge SE. Nally Ford Sandy Springs, 7555 Roswell Road. Or visit nallyford.com. Be sure to tell them you heard about it on the Sports Jock Show. That's nallyford.com. This week's episode, Rattlesnake at the Pond. Oh, Johnny, skipping rocks at the pond sure is fun. Hey, look, a moving stick. That ain't a stick. That's a rattlesnake. Sassy, we're in danger. Good idea, Sassy. Go get Mr. Gunderson. You will in a second, but first you'd like to tell us something we may not know about animal shelters in the United States? It's getting close, Sassy. Approximately 8 million pets enter shelters each year? The majority of which are in shelters because of owner-related issues that the animals have no control over? Sassy the rattlesnake! Save us, Sassy! What, Sassy? You wish you were videotaping this? Sassy! Sassy is brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Remember, adopt! NDC Family Care Incorporated's Dr. Jermaine Cummings of Loganville, Georgia is now accepting new patients in the Loganville area. Introduce yourself to Dr. Cummings and her unique approach to health care today. Visit drjermainecummings.com. That's D-R-G-E-R-M-A-I-N-E Cummings.com. Or call 770-554-8828. That's 770-554-8828. And tell her you heard this ad on the Sports Jock Show. DrJermaineCummings.com. And now, back to the sports job, Wayne Gandy. Welcome back to the Sports Jock Show. I'm the Sports Jock, Wayne Gandy. A couple of shows ago, we told you about a score out in California in a high school basketball game that was 162-2. to two. Um, A couple of days ago, over in Alabama, high school teams played. The score ended up being 2-0. The coach, basically, the team got the ball, they scored, and then the other team held the ball the rest of the quarter. So when uh, the game ended up being 2-0, Big Kenny, um, 
I don't know what's going on on these high school levels. <laughs> like seriously, like four quarters, two zero. It's for four quarters, <laughs> not a rain out or a fight or anything. This is just happens to be the score. Uh, uh, Tiger Woods had to withdraw from the former's insurance open out in San Diego. Uh, tightness in the lower back. Um, that means Lindsey Vaughn. Uh, lower back tightness. That's how that equates. Uh, they'll get it later. You know, just keep going. They're they, they writing it down. They'll figure it out a little later. Uh, the Tiger Woods, uh, as we spoke about early on the show, uh, off the air, you know, he is rounding up on 40. He has been in the game a long time. Been on the pro circuit, I think, since he was 20. Uh, something like that. Um, right out of Stanford. So, um, he always played with a very muscular physique, which I'm quite sure, as you know, as you get older, pulls and strains and stuff really can be affected a little more. Uh, I hope that at some point in these last years, he can just pull off one more major. I think that would be very, very exciting. Did, it would, it would did, very did exciting. he say lower back pain? Is that what he lower said? Lower back tightness. Lower back tightness. That's Elon. That's Elon or not? Yeah, she's a pain in his lower back. <laughs> I had it as Lindsay. I got the wrong one. You got the wrong one. Uh, the, the pain in the lower, lower, lower back. That's even right there. <laughs> the Raiders hired Ken Norton Jr. to be their defensive coordinator. Um, he was a linebacker coach with the Seahawks the last couple of years under Pete Carroll. He was also at USC with Pete Carroll. You might know Ken from his Dallas and San Francisco days, a gentleman that I played many, many games against. Um, he's the defensive coordinator now for Jared's team, the Raiders. Jared's uh, team. Yes, Jared's <laughs> That's team. We're gonna call him now. <laughs> <laughs> Jared's team. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> Nobody else is claiming. I might as well call him Jared's team. Uh, Aaron Hernandez case has been delayed a day due to the weather up there. Do you, do you get time served for that too? I, I that day. So he, uh, it's not like he's going anywhere. He's right. not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Bush, uh, speculation that he might have been with Darren Sharper when some of the Molly dropping in the drinks was going down. Um, you talking about a man's not built for prison. I mean, what would his name be turned to? What what, what would he be? I, I mean, you know, Re Reggie Bush is. Uh, I guess it will be the reverse. I was gonna say he's used to finding a hole, but maybe that would be a, a reverse. <laughs> used, to, used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, Regina. He, yeah. right. Regina. He'd have to go from a running Regina back Bush. to a wide receiver. <laughs> well, you know, he liked to run out of the backfield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but they're running in the backfield in this case. I suppose. It'll, they'll get it. I'm telling you. Yeah. Later. 20, we need 2016. 2016. Right 2016. <laughs> they'll all get all these jokes. <laughs> and we had a story out of um, with Julian Elman. A couple of things um, with this Twitter and posting and all this. Uh, Julian Elman, Odell Beckham Jr., even people like Lil Wayne, women are, uh, while they're sleeping, taking kind of selfies. Can we show a couple of these up on the Sports Doc, Sports Doc page? Um, in two of these captions, you can see where that's Ooh. Julian Ellen. Yeah, um, they forgot to block out the, 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 the title. They didn't, there, ed, but they hey, didn't edit it. Um, that's not on me. That's on them. Um, one said that they had just had sex uh, at the bottom of this caption. <laughs> but they used the French word for sex. Uh, this woman here, Stephanie, 19 years old, said that they had just had sex and the rest of you need to get your game up. Um, this is becoming the new trend where the girls are definitely letting you know who they are sleeping with. Um, you do not have to get on the Atlanta Housewives show to say that now. You can just say it on your social media page. Uh, selfie, this is your generation. Um, you're closer to those ages. I mean, Big Kenny got a son that's older than that girl. Uh, <laughs> So you're closer to their age. Uh, the girls of your generation seems uh, right here. Lil Wayne is sleep from some of that cough syrup. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> and this girl is letting the world know where she is. I know her mama is so proud. Um, 
What what where is where are y'all and, going? And Wayne this? ought to be ashamed. Does she really look like somebody you want right. to pass out with? You know what I'm saying? That's why she's hey, taking man. the picture. When you're on um. that many drugs, she looked like Holly Berry. Okay, right. I guess at first. Maybe now when he wakes up, up, he's gonna think she's the maid. What are you doing here? <laughs> but uh, what what's going on with your generation in this uh, that, course of action now? That just to me seems like a scream for attention. You know. I'm, I'm over here with this player, and instead of you saying I'm hanging out with him or I met him or something, you're going to go take it to the full extreme. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Most girls, if it does come down to that, what most girls used to do is you take the picture and you just send it to your home girl and y'all just talk, you know, smack about him for a little bit or whatever. But um, posting it online, I think it's a little over excessive and it makes you look really bad. Now, the same situation, same people, the guys do it to the girl. How is the public reaction? totally different he would uh he would be in trouble for that he posted that video posted any picture saying that a girl he just smashed this girl whatever um yeah i think i think a guy would get in trouble more mm-hmm. so than a female and i think i think they should be in trouble for what they did posting online that's jeopardizing them and their uh face which right. they have to have and keep for the position of what they're what they're in but um i think because of how society handles things with these with the whole domestic violence and stuff, they're definitely going to target the men harder than the women right now. Big Kenny, is this a pathway for them to end up on the Bad Girls Club or one of those shows? I I, I think that they see it as a viable option for uh, propelling themselves forward in this uh, media craze society. The fact that they do it is because people have been rewarded for that type of behavior in the past. Uh, Kim Kardashian uh, let Ray J have his way with her on film. And now she's doing commercials with the title famous person. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So if it worked for her, why wouldn't it work? Because sooner or later her run will be over and they'll need a new famous person. So all of these people see it as some way to make themselves more popular. Uh, it's a shame that the entertainment industry right now is so geared towards giving opportunities to people with a large social media presence that regardless of why people are following you, if you've got the numbers, then you become popular. Right. And as you're saying, with her moving up, Kim is closing in on mid thirties. Mm-hmm. You're married now. You got a kid. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. The, yeah. the view of you trying to sell people as this. Right. You're not trampy enough. You're not. You're, you're, exactly. you're not trampy right. enough anymore. You're, you're not going to be able to hold that down. Um, right. And in any business, everybody gets to be replaced. Right. You know, and and that's the thing. And I and I just see that this being something that it seems that social media. Every calendar month becomes more and more evil. But and and next thing you know, is going to be sexual recordings. It's going to be what you say. You can send someone to Vine for eight yeah. minutes. That's, right, already, right, that's right. already been done. Yeah, I mean, oh. people are already doing yeah, that. Oh, I'm, already I'm doing behind. That. You're but, far, far behind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I They're think, already at that level. I'm, I'm yeah. sitting there giving y'all credit, but y'all have already... Yeah, you can get really, and, and the only way... Grimy out there. The only way that it's going to get reduced <clears throat> or eliminated is if they start to prosecute or at least criminalize the females doing it the same way that they do the males mm-hmm. doing it. So if I send out a selfie with selfie in the background, like I smashed her flat, you know what I mean? And, and uh, <laughs> we've been, on, yeah, we've been yeah, on fleek. Yeah, we've been on fleek. <laughs> then everybody will be like, that's horrible. But if she does it to me and, and, and people are outraged, then maybe it'll stop. But, and that's why I asked she that question. get a reality right. show. If, if, on, right. the, and on, on the reverse, Elderman <laughs> right. does it. And then they pull all his commercials and he's supposed to be so, so much integrity right, right, and right. all this. And then you're doing this while this man is actually asleep. And I'm quite right. sure when he woke up to all the phone calls that he got for this, yeah. he wasn't happy. And then you wonder why. Some and then of them domestic end up violence jumps choke. off. Right. right. Exactly. You wonder why and and now you got to. Why did he act like that yeah. towards me? Right. And, and, you know, they say a lot of times it's the guy's fault, but you know how this goes. You're partying all mm-hmm. night. Uh, either with this girl or you hook up with the girl after the party. Uh, it's your last stop of the night. So you're hoping to get a little bit of sleep. Right. And she sees it as a total opportunity to make myself. And that's why I was saying with Lil Wayne, he's knocked out like that because you're catching, you're that last gravy train. Right. You're catching him at the 4.30, 5 o'clock hour after we've gone hard. And this is right after the Super Bowl with the Edelman picture. Right. right. So 
So that dude Dang. was just worn out from playing the he game. Just, you know, <laughs> he wasn't even partying. I just I had, I had to block people all day. Yeah, I've been running these nine routes all right. day, right. trying to get open, and uh, this is out, and it's just scary to see where this social media thing may end up. As you, you and Big Kenny are saying, what I'm thinking is the next phase has already been implemented, and uh, we'll see where this ends. And, and what does it really say? If he's not married, all it says is, hey, I was easy to take home right. to me. That's all it says. Right. Is, you know, I don't know this guy, and he was able to use me, and now I'm letting everybody know you can have right. a and shot. That's, and that's why I said it has to be another plan with this that I'm going to get somebody – Oh, okay. She's on this show. What does she do? She slept with Edelman. That's because right. that's about all these shows about anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, we are in the ocean and we have ran out of time. So that means that for my birthday, I'm going to be able to rescue myself and throw the rescue bombs off hey, of Dad, my ship. How do you feel? Off of my ship. No, I'm not going to do that. But uh, happy birthday to me. The truth is. Thank you for all you people out there that have ever shown me any love, which would amount to maybe like two and a half people. But uh, no, I'm messing with you. <laughs> you don't get far in life without someone having a love thought for you. Uh, happy birthday, Wayne G. Uh, you know, ex offensive lineman. A lot of my brother would have died by this time. But damn it. I'm going to get about 40 more in. I'm going to replace some parts like Michael Jackson. Yeah. yeah, get me some fake lungs and a fake face like Joan Rivers. Be here till at least. I got to hunt my daughter at least 40 more years. She thinks she's just going to ride on my fortune. No. But for the Sports Talk crew, enjoy your Monday. Peace.